Yeah, so.
Hey, good afternoon and welcome here to the campus of Montana Tech as we get ready for Ore Digger football here. It is senior day. The Digs taking on the Bulldogs of UM Western. Our seniors being recognized on the field as we speak. And actually, we're, we will hear from Coach Sampson at halftime. In our entire halftime, we'll be uh, Coach Sampson talking about his seniors. I, I sat down with him earlier this week. Uh, it is one of my favorite things I get to do every year going back to green days. Uh, talk to uh, the coaches and have them go through their seniors in their own words. Uh, there just there just isn't anything better. So uh, make sure to stay uh, stick around for that at halftime. Uh, Paul Panisco, Ron Haskett here as we get ready to roll. Haskey, how are you, brother? Oh, I couldn't be better. You know, it's miserable out there, and it's ten times better than I thought it was going to be yes. after I woke up this morning. So, yeah, it's going to be a windy, uh, a tough day to throw the ball. Uh, you know, I, I expect a real low-scoring game. Western's playing really good football now. Yes. Uh, more like what they expected going into the season. I got to visit with Coach Norris before the game a little bit on the sideline. Uh, he's kind of been devastated with injuries, especially in his secondary. And uh, But he's encouraged, you know, the last couple of weeks, couple big games. You know, Western's the only team to knock off the College of Idaho uh, so far this year. So you know they're a sound football team. And when I look at the frontier right now, I see five teams that are literally mimics of each other. College mm -hmm. Idaho and Carroll and Tech and Rocky and Western. Uh, something's going to break in the next two weeks. Uh, but uh, Montana Tech has to take care of the matter at hand. I mean, uh, this is a huge game for them. They're ranked, what are they, 20th right now? 20th. Yeah, 20th in the country. And uh, the chance at a, a second slot, because you can only control your own destiny. Yes. You can't hope that the College of Idaho is going to lose. They got Eastern Oregon today, and then they got a tough matchup their last game of the year. Carroll will come to town, down to Caldwell, and... Uh, who knows? You know, Carroll's playing really good football. They're, you know, they've the, the the funny thing about Carroll is their defensive stats have they've they've emerged in Eclipse Tech in points per game and yep. yards per game. So that uh, Carroll defense is tough. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to a real hard hitting affair. Western always brings it, and uh, they travel well to the Mining City every Sweet. year and Senior Day. A lot of emotions here today. Well, again, uh, thanks for joining us here as it is Senior Day. We'll talk about all these seniors as we go, but uh, you have to talk about the history of this ball game. Obviously, college football, there are some monster games throughout the country on this Saturday. Tennessee and, Tennessee and Georgia playing uh, here this afternoon, uh, and that is the 51st time those two teams have played. Alabama and LSU playing later today. Uh, that'll be the 86th time that those two programs have met. Uh, and here in uh, Montana Tech and Bob Green Field, the Digs taking on the Western Bulldogs for the 126th second time uh, in program history. The first one was back in 1925. The Digs won that one and uh, we'll see what happens here in the 122nd meeting as uh, Montana Tech celebrating Senior Day. Uh, truly one of our favorite days. This is a good group. 14 players and of course you got to throw Nate Dog in there as well with the equipment manager as makes 15 and uh, again we will hear from Coach Sampson coming up at half and he will run through the entirety of uh, his seniors in his own words at halftime. Uh, and, and this is another one where you, you look at this group. I mean, you, you look at the impact that these guys out here on the field have made uh, in this tech program. And, and there's a lot of guys out here that, uh, you know, not only have had great careers, but are, are individuals that we're going to be talking about for a long time. Such good dudes. And uh, you hear me say it at nauseum. This is a huge day. Uh, never appreciated it so much as a player. But as an assistant coach, I mean, these are your guys. You know, they're in your meeting room every day before practice. Uh, you spend so much time around them. You know, so many emotions. You know, somebody that will come in, stick it out, get through school, lay it all on the line for their teammates. You know, I see uh, going through uh, Naoki Harmer, Jordan Washington, going out to, to give his fellow secondary mate a hug. I mean, we've been yelling uh, Naoki Harmer's name here for how many years, yeah. you know. Uh, looking next to him, Zeke Frommel. You know, you go from the guys that you talk about a lot to the guys that that stuck it out and yep. weren't necessarily in the limelight, like the Zeke Frommels of the world or Brett Robinson. Uh, but they stuck it out, and uh, they've they've garnered the uh, the respect of their teammates, and the coaches just love them. It's just it is a great day for assistant coaches. Uh, you know, the head coach. I mean, that's one thing, but uh, assistant coaches. I mean, these are these are your guys. You know, yeah. you. You know, a lot of times, <laughs> as an assistant coach, you don't even really get to know. So I coached on offense. You don't even get to know a lot of the individual defensive guys that well, but it's your meeting room, your your uh, 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 position, uh, practice to practice, game to game, these guys that you spend so much time around and you get to know them so well. And uh, 
you you really understand the sacrifice that they make uh, you know they got good tough hard class loads up here but um, they're at every meeting they're at every weight training session and yep. the game's really evolved over you know 35 years or 30 years since I played and I coached but uh, yeah they buy in you know they sacrifice in internships to stay here with their teammates and work yep. out and be prepared in the fall I mean those are the overlooked things you know so you know, and in a lot of cases, you know, they sacrifice themselves a little bit for future employment, you know, because so many uh, job opportunities when you get through school stem out of internships. And these guys, in a lot of cases, they, they sacrifice that because they want to be great on Saturday for this town and for this institution. And, uh, I mean, it's just something else. I, I think of Trevor Hoffman. I mean, he's he's been an integral part of this team since the day he walked on campus. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's just a lot of fun, and, and it is a big day. Well, uh, again, thanks for joining us here on a Saturday, the final home game for Montana Tech on the year. They will go to Northern next week to wrap things up against the lights in their new facility. Uh, let's start with the, the conference standings as we sit right now. College of Idaho is 7-1. and one. They are on top of the pile. And behind them, you have Montana Tech at 6-2. and two. Carroll College also 6-2. and two. Remember, Tech has the tiebreaker there. So if uh, that comes in, into play later, it uh, could be a big factor. But again, both are 6-2. and two. You have Rocky Mountain College at 5-3. and three. Western at 4-4. Four and four. Southern at 3-5. and five. Eastern at 1-7. And, and Northern at 0-8 oh on the year. Look at these uh, underclassmen walk out to, to give props to their seniors. I look at Caleb Winterburn, who stepped in last week against Rocky yeah. and really felt a comfort at tailback that we really haven't seen. You know, we, we see him relieve Blake Counts there at tailback throughout the last two seasons. But last week, you know, when he got in at the end of that game, and, and you got to credit the offensive front, they did a They've really good awesome. job to secure that win at Rocky. But... Winterburn ran differently. You know, we spoke uh, during the week a little bit about that, and I said, and I just saw a freedom in his running style uh, that that I really hadn't seen. So he really stepped up, and and uh, yeah, he loves his teammates. You know, he transplanted here out of MSU, the the Helena product. You know, he used to be a quarterback, and uh, going and giving. Yeah, no, this is a close team. I mean, just yeah. just watch him go up and down the sideline there and see all his seniors. It's good stuff. Well, as uh, we get ready for the start of this one, Montana Tech taking on the Bulldogs of UM Western. The Digs went on the road and beat Western in Dillon for the first time in a long time uh, in a huge win earlier this year. Uh, talk about how that affects this game. I mean, obviously, both sides are, are looking at that tape. They're looking at, uh, you know, scouting themselves here over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, both teams obviously want to win out. For Tech, you have to. They've been in, they've been in playoff mode now for the last two weeks. They're 2-0 and through that span. What do you take away from week one or the first meeting between these two and apply to this uh, here today? Well, Western's going to want some revenge because Tech went in there and kind of knocked them over a little bit. Blake Counts had a big game. Uh, you know, they got up yep. early, and then they kind of hung on. You know, as we've seen Montana Tech do in, in a lot of their victories this year, you know, they uh, the, the second half last week at Rocky, you know, as far as their season has gone, it was a little bit of an anomaly. They were down – you know, late in the first half, they were down 14 nothing. Uh, they made a quarterback change. They went to Blake Thielen, and they got a score late in the second quarter to make it a 14-7 game at halftime. But, you know, they dug in. It was a hard-hitting game, and they played a really good second half of football. But, uh, you know, that doesn't rest. I, I've known Ryan Norris now for the head coach at Western for a lot of years. And, I, you know, I, I've talked a lot on air about – how I love his style. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a he's a no BS guy. Uh, you know, he sees some changes coming at the end of his season this year, but he uh, that doesn't rest easy with him, and he will constantly remind those guys that uh, you know he'll he'll just convincingly tell them you know, we're a better team than that, and uh, we should be able to beat this team from Montana Tech. So, you know, Tech's going to look at it you know from a different angle, I guess. You know, Blake Counts was injured at the end of that Rocky game last week and, and I don't know what his status is for today. He but not only is dressed he's got his helmet on that's what I was pointing to you he is walking up and down giving oh, there some loves to, to uh, the players up yeah. and down as well so like you said he, he did get banged up at the end of that game he is fully dressed um, and from what I was told expected to start today but we certainly will see 
uh, as this one goes. And remember, that first meeting was the first start for Blake, uh, for Blake Thielen. Uh, that was uh, certainly a big factor in that game uh, in Dillon. Blake Thielen making his first starts, and, and he's been fantastic since. You know, you look at what Thielen has done here for Montana Tech uh, as far as throwing the football. Uh, Thielen right now completing 55% of his passes. Uh, he's 66 of 121 on the year, thrown for 1,104 yards, 10 touchdowns, one interception. Uh, and again, uh, the young sophomore, uh, that was his first start, and you never would have guessed it watching it. I mean, he, he stepped into that role. Uh, his offense rallied around him. I, the entire team rallied around him, and you never would have guessed that that was his first start. I mean, he stepped in and just ran that ship incredibly well. Yeah, really stark difference between him and Jeff Campbell. Campbell will pass set. And if he's on balance, he delivers a really catchable ball. He always has. You know, we've talked in the past about how accurate he can be. But uh, Campbell will tend to get a little uncomfortable, and, and that will force him to run, you know, whether he's going to try and escape out on the edge or step up into a gap and, and do a little damage on his feet. You rarely see that out of Blake Thielen. That ball is going to get uh, – it's going to get thrown. You know, he, you know, he's pretty diligent in his throwaways. Uh, Montana Tech hasn't really given up a lot of sacks this year. You've nope. got to credit that offensive front. Only six. Uh, yeah, six sacks on the season. You know, and, and a couple of those are a product of, say, Jet Campbell's athleticism, getting out of there, and uh, Blake Thielen getting the ball thrown, you know. Uh, but, yeah, a, pr a pretty stark difference between the two. I'm curious to see how they're going to start it out today. It's a crosswind. It's really windy here today. You know, really you're going to get 20, 25-mile-an-hour winds gusts you know 30 maybe 40 miles an hour crosswinds are hard you know it's one thing if you're uh if you're throwing dead into the wind or dead against the wind but uh, i would expect a lot of rollout stuff shorter yeah. you know shorter passes to completion you know that kind of that stuff especially out of out of uh out of montana tech but crosswinds are really hard um and, and they're going to see a pretty stiff one today. Yeah, this wind has just been howling here uh, throughout the night, throughout the morning hours, and into kickoff time. This wind is going to be a big issue. And, uh, you know, you look at John Jund and what he has done. Uh, we talked about Blake Thielen. Jund, you know, when I when I talked to, uh, you know, talking to the coaches and that, that, the one thing when I talked to Coach Ryan Norris a couple of weeks ago is he said, you know, it, it throughout the season they had played really well at different places, but never all on the same page. You know, they, they just couldn't get it all under the same banner and he feels like that they finally have done that now you know that that bye week was big for him they've won their last two games obviously a huge one over the college of idaho uh, but it, western goes as john jund goes i mean there is no denying that and john jund is really one of the better quarterbacks in this conference 61 percent of his passes uh, he's thrown for 1940 yards on the year 16 touchdowns eight interceptions on the year right now uh, but john jund uh, is going to be a big factor in this ball game period he he can run the football a little bit uh, and, and obviously the game is going to come down to trenches you brought up montana tech's the our offensive front earlier they have just been outstanding i mean they have uh, against uh, you know giving the quarterbacks time to throw the football running the football they have really come together in a big way uh and and the other big factor that jumps out at me is is turnovers you know montana tech has had so few turnovers this year. They're plus 12 in turnover margin, which if you're high single digits in turnover margin, you're in you're in rarefied air. I mean, you just don't see teams jumping into the double-digit mark uh, plus 12, and what that means is you've taken the ball away from the other teams 12 more times than you have given it up. Uh, that turnover margin number is a big factor in the digs right now, plus 12, uh, which is a, a huge number. Yeah, and, uh, you know, another thing that's – really gonna I don't know I, I'm curious to see how it plays out today Jund you know I think a Western you know grinding it out Neville's had a you know another decent year I mean he's a transfer from Nevada I mean yep. he's the real deal there at tailback uh, Tech is really sound defensively they're tough to sustain drives against but uh, what Western will do that that Tech hasn't really seen since the Rocky game is they will get the quarterback involved in the running game just power left power right just that extra guy that extra blocker uh we saw rocky do it a little bit with nathan dick in the in tex uh, one of two losses earlier this season but uh the one of the keys to western success last year in the playoff run was their willingness to run jund in third and short fourth and short and uh i would expect that kind of stuff today we're going to get our national anthem so with it we will pause we're back after this
The Tech Band is in the house. We get our national anthem, and uh, we get ready for the start of this one. I made the remark as I was walking up the bleachers, and they were all sitting there, I mean, right oh, in the oh. face of this wind oh. with their instruments. I said, you guys might be the toughest team on the field today. Oh, Yeah, it's, it, uh, you got to credit awful. those those uh, individuals with the Montana Tech Band sucking it up and showing up here today. Uh, the other one we have to throw kudos to is, like, as we look at our monitors, there, there's individuals running those cameras up on top of this box, and the wind is just ripping. Um, so uh, we, we, we have to thank them as well. It's, it is awful cold. Uh, the sun is out, but the wind is just howling, and that's going to be a significant issue as uh, we continue through this afternoon. Again, it is senior day for Montana Tech as the Bulldogs of UM Western in town as the captains come out. And I believe, I think Bailey Phillips is going to give us our coin toss today of memory serves there. Bailey, I believe. Bailey Phillips, uh, a, a Montana Tech Student, yeah. uh, Met student who is uh, a Rhodes Scholar finalist. Yes, yeah. we have a friend here. Her, uh, logo. her mother Jennifer yeah. used to work with my uh, with my wife at the hospital. So I've known Bailey for Western for many many visitor? years. And and uh, if you'll indulge me for a second, another uh, Phillips, if you do the honors, I guess it would be guest captain that was scheduled to be here today, but they couldn't make it. You know, the weather and, and all that Check stuff it, was Chris Whitmore's hey, son, Patrick, who I think is listening to us today. But, Patrick, uh, we're sorry you couldn't make it if you're out there. But I got to visit with your dad, and yeah. and uh, he was going to Check be one. an Good assistant point. captain for the ore diggers today as well and just unable to work it out. But, uh, Patrick, uh, hopefully you can – Use your mojo and help Montana Tech win the coin toss. That's the deal. So uh, Bailey Phillips giving us the coin toss. Again, a Rhodes Scholar finalist here at Montana Tech. Her old man and I have known each other since we were like four years old. Russ is the man. Yeah, we were drinking out of the same mud puddle. <laughs> I mean, you, you get us two, like Russ and I, for goodness sake, and then his daughter Bailey. And <laughs> she's a Rhodes Scholar, and the two of us can't spell Rhodes. <laughs> Uh, so uh, congratulations to Bailey, and, and hopefully, you know, she. I believe they've gone through like five. I, I, don't, I don't know if weeding out process is the right term, but the idea of interviews and that, but she has gone through like four or five steps to this point, and I think it's down to like 16 names uh, to be named a Rhodes Scholar. Uh, so uh, hopefully Bailey is able to uh, make that happen, a, a Met student here at Montana Tech, and, and certainly uh, a tremendous one at that. Really impressive student. <laughs> Something that was never said about <laughs> you and I. <laughs> All right, so the uh, Bulldogs getting ready to take on Montana Tech again. The 122nd meeting between the two, the first back to 1925. You know what I was the king of in college? Answering, Not showing up. Answering the rhetorical question. <laughs> 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 that's, okay. that's how I finally knew it was simple enough for me to answer it. I was good at picking up the syllabus, and that <laughs> usually was the last time I saw the classroom. Usually. It just looked like an awful lot of work when you read that <laughs> syllabus, didn't oh, it? it? I'm telling you, there were a lot of big words used and just didn't settle well with me. So uh, we have uh, one week left. It does it look uh, as though we're going to get one team in the playoffs, period. And whoever is going to win this Frontier Conference crown is more than likely going to be our only team that will get to the national tournament. Do you think? I think so. I don't Do think there's Do you think are there no way. matchups coming up I don't, within those? Because I, I don't look above, at the national spectrum. And, and that's the thing. We need, like, College of Idaho to climb. You know, and the College of Idaho has to win out. And if they do, that means they win two big games, one of them over Carroll, which is, is ranked, which would help. But I just don't see them climbing into the single-digit territory and Tech climbing into the low teens for a possibility. You know, and, and those, no. are, those are the scenarios in my eyes. Carroll's got the toughest finish. Yes, They've got to go time. to Southern this weekend and then and go to Caldwell. CMI and play COI next weekend. So they've got the toughest finish, no doubt. Far and away. Yeah, and College of Idaho has, uh, what, Eastern today, I believe, and then they finish uh, with Carroll College, if memory serves correct. So Tech will kick off here to the Bulldogs. You know, with senior days, uh, my thoughts are with Ben Windauer. He is a senior, and we've essentially only got to call his name this year. He's yeah. had a great year at inside linebacker. Yep. But he's been riddled with injuries, Bad. you know, for like three or four years, and uh, – and for him to be able to enjoy his senior day after a great senior citizen or <laughs> senior citizen <laughs> senior season is uh, is you know that those that that's the kind of thing I think about and yep. uh, you know a Columbia Falls kid, a tough athletic family, and for him to get to enjoy his senior year taking every snap there at inside backer has just been great. Well, here you go. You obviously noticed that uh, the wind blew that ball off the tee, so they are going to have to have a holder. 
And I can't imagine that's something that you practice a whole lot in practice is the I a holder on the kickoff. But they do they do practice yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, we do practice it. So the Digs getting ready to kick off here. Frontier Conference action here with Montana Tech on the stream. Thanks for joining us. Blasted. This one will go into the end zone. Boy, the wind just ripped that thing across the field. Yeah, special teams player of the week, Kyle Lowry. There you go. Um, he missed his first field goal attempt down there, Rocky, and uh, uh, didn't get discouraged, hit another big field goal later in the game, and then, of course, the game clincher. Uh, uh, congratulations to him. Uh, great honor, special teams player of the week, John, and really answered the bell. John Jun will bring him out here, hitting 61% of his passes. Jun is thrown for 1,940 yards. He's also their second leading rusher with 445 yards on the ground. Jund, a senior out of Spring Creek, Nevada. One back trips receivers here on the bottom of your screen. Montana Tech adjusting defensively. They'll run screen here on the edge across the 25-30. Good blocking out in front. That's out to the 37-yard line as Western and that's Isaiah Thomas, who's going to be a big, a big factor in this ball game, a gain of 12. They had an overload. They had four receivers to the wide side of the field and then just a, uh, literally a dead tee, a tackle to the boundary. Montana Tech struggled to get lined up there. You saw Jordan Washington run out of there, out of the wide side to the, to the weak side that time. Western exposed it just with a little quick out, bubble screen, whatever you want to call it, and picked up a first down. So up to the line of scrimmage comes Western. Man in motion, play action, heavy pressure coming. Jun gets rid of it, but hits his receiver in the hand. Tech brought everybody, it felt like, right up the middle. Heavy pressure that time on Jun to get rid of it. Great read that time. Nail coming down off the hash mark, getting in the face of Jund there at forced a forced a wide throw and you can see the difficulty in that throw and that throw alone by Jund. That ball sailed a little bit on him. Second down and 10 from the line of scrimmage. Two receivers all the way up top, one at the bottom. Stacked receivers out to the wide side. I'd expect a little inside zone here to Neville. Tech has a nickel package in, hand off to the tailback. Huge gap and off to the races. Neville across the 50-45 and shoved down at the 38-yard line as uh, Reese Neville, senior out of Nevada, gets his first carry, and that will move the chains. Big gap once he got through that first level. Yeah, they saw something they liked there. Neville in the backfield, stacked receivers. Montana Tech walked out wide with them. Just not much inside presence to, to stop an inside zone running play. Second down and 10 here for Western. Good opening drive thus far. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. One back, two receivers left. One to the right. Jund rolls the rifle shot. That one is ricocheted and almost intercepted. What a play by the deep safety that time for Montana Tech as that thing just shot out. Yeah, it looked like Morley almost made a play on that ball. It was deflected hard. You could see Jund wanted to, I mean, really fire that out route that time. He's, I mean, he wound up to throw that, that out route. It looked like Jordan Washington closed on the ball. The ball got deflected. Uh, almost a huge turnover here to start this game. That'll bring up second and 10 here for West. Backs here for the first time. Two receivers bottom, one up top. Mont brings four up to the defensive front. See if they can get some pressure on Jund here. Play action. Jund stands, delivers downfield, has a man, caught, touchdown, Western. Western will get it down as uh, coming down with that one. It looked as though that was Polardi. Is it number 12? Is that right? I don't know if it's him or Isaiah Thomas. I think it's 19. 19. Okay, thank you. So it is Isaiah Thomas. And Thomas will get the touchdown, a second catch of the afternoon, and Western will get on the board first. And Thomas limps to the sidelines yeah he came and came down awkward but you got to credit Jun that time he threw the deep ball in a crosswind so he has to play that like a golf shot you know he has Truly. to start that left of the green and and float it in there he dialed it up perfectly for thomas who just thought you know he had a step step and a half on his defender but the ball was placed perfectly well thrown football and western gets on the board first and the pat is up the pat is good so western will get on the board first seven to zero our score as the Bulldogs up over the Diggers here on the campus of Montana Tech. Only a minute gone here in the opening quarter. One minute, three seconds gone. And uh, Western jumps out quickly. So Western gets on the board. 38-yard touchdown scoring strike. That's a prepared football team. I mean, no that joke. was a prepared football team. That was a, a real well thought out first series of snaps. I would I would guess that that is, uh, you know, scheduled or, or scripted. Scripted, yep. You know what they call uh, scripted, but... You know, pretty much, you know, I'd, I'd say maybe two-thirds of what they looked at was really su uh, successful. You know, you talk about stack receivers out there and running an inside zone. And you, 
and uh, uh, catching them on the on the deep touchdown. But really well thought out, well planned execution there by that Western offense. So Western will kick off again. A really nice scoring drive that time by Western. It's interesting, like you say, the idea of scripting your plays. You hear about it a lot, but you wonder how much like the weather affects things. You know, I mean, it, it, whether you script that in the morning or how early you do, because uh, that crosswind is, is it, it, you feel like it would present a heck of a challenge here today. And right now, John Jun made that look pretty darn easy. Yeah, you expect it. You get good forecasts, right? And so that that plan, that script starts to go into effect. You know, on Tuesday, a lot of times you'll have a running day Tuesday, maybe a throwing day Wednesday, but you start to take into uh, account forecast and what you want to try and do. A ton of air underneath the kick into the end zone, and it will be a touchback. So, again, Western five plays, 75 yards, seven points. They go up 7-0. to zero. And the Diggs offense will see their first chance here today. It looks like win or burn. I, I haven't seen 24 there. Blake okay. counts the tailback. I saw Winterbird walk into the huddle. Yeah, there, Blake, Blake's going to. Yep, so we'll get... Actually, both quarterbacks are coming out. So Thielen is coming out. Jet Campbell also coming out. And Blake Counts is in the backfield. So they're going to stack up both quarterbacks. Jet Campbell is lined up as the deep back. Thielen lined up at quarterback. And now Campbell goes in motion. Jet Campbell splits wide right. Remember, he came to Tech as a receiver. Handoff going to go to Blake Counts. Counts across the 30. Stiff arm. 35. Counts down the sidelines. Out of bounds at the 42. It is just a blast to watch him run through leg tackles. He took a pretty he's good hurt. shot going out of bounds, yeah. and he's down. So Blake counts, goes to the That's ground, a, gets I, up slowly. I'd imagine, you know, with it being kind of a midsection injury last week, I, I would hurt. think that was going going to happen quite a bit today. He'll just be maybe a little slow to get up. Yep. So he will stay on the sidelines, <laughs> walking like it every off. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Winterburn comes in at tailback. Thielen looks to the sideline. Western in an odd front. I haven't seen much odd front out of Coach Norris and his staff over the years. They they typically got four-man surface, uh, both the guards covered. And hand off to Winterburn. Winterburn finds a lane up the middle. He'll get one, possibly two, before he is taken down. Yeah. Winterburn, I think he, if he could do it again, he would see that wineback was open a little earlier. He just got uh, going play side and was unable to get back to the to the cutback hole. Cameron Rouser from middle linebacker stepped up to make the stop. Second down and eight here for the Digs. Ball at their 42-yard line. Winterburn stays in the backfield. Three receivers right, one of the lefts. Thielen out of the shotgun. Again, Thielen's first start was against Western. With the injury to Jet Campbell, Campbell is back and healthy, and I assume we will see a little bit of both here today. Thielen. Corner starting to back off. Thielen dropping back, looking to throw. Pump fake. Thielen's in trouble. He's going to be sacked at the 31. That's going to be a loss of 10 as Western gets multiple bodies there. One of the first there is Reese Arts. Yeah, it looked like Tyler Walker there was there as well. It almost looked like a face mask. Uh, his hand came down on the helmet of the quarterback, but uh, two officials right there, uh, neither one of them uh, made the call on the face mask. So, yeah, a little pressure, five-man rush that time, and Montana Tech, you know, they, they got hat on hat, but just got beat. So Western with the first sack here of the contest, and they now will adjust in the defensive front. Thielen out of the shotgun, four-man pressure. Thielen stands. Thielen trying to escape. He'll get sacked again. Back-to-back -back sacks by Western. Yeah. That is uh, certainly the way to start this football game here for the Bulldogs. That's Tyler Walker again. That's a big-time play. Back-to-back -back sacks. Again, we talked about it in the pregame. Montana Tech had only allowed six sacks on the year to this point, and Western gets two on back-to-back -back plays. Fourth and long, and now Montana Tech going to be forced to punt it away. Yeah, almost a little pressure on the punters today. You know, when, when it's windy like this, you can get some movement in that football on the way from your hand to the foot. So yeah. a lot of pressure on the punters. Snap is back. The kick. Low line drive, bounces at the 43, takes an Ordinger bounce to the 36 where it's scooped up. So Winterburn scoops it up, and the Bulldogs will get another go. Timeout. So the Bulldogs Media. of UM Western will half. bring the offense back out. Again, they scored on their opening possession. They went five plays, 75 yards, and got seven points out of it. That defense can pose a problem. If you're going to get pressure on the quarterback with a four-man rush, uh, I would – 
you know, one thing I would expect to see is a change in quarterbacks. You know, they, you want a quarterback that maybe will try and run out of there a little bit and, and, and keep those defensive front guys from pinning their ears back. So you might see Campbell a little earlier in this game at quarterback. And it looks like we have a timeout on the floor. So uh, with it, we'll take one as well, kids. We're back here to Bob Green after this. like Butte Auto that shares our mission of community partnership, making the Butte community a better place to be while being excellent in their field is a natural partnership that we're excited to be a part of. Hey, once again, welcome back here to the campus of Montana Tech as the Bulldogs offense back out onto the field. The wind is just howling through here. First down and 10 for John Jund and company. Jund, handoff, and just Neville is pounded. The minute Neville got that football, he went to the turf immediately. That's Trumbull getting down the line of scrimmage from the wide side of the field, coming down nice and flat, chasing down that inside zone. You know, from the back side, Trumbull and uh, Keyshawn James Newby both do that so well. Second and 13 here for the Bulldogs. And I mentioned in the past, you control that guy with the quarterback, but defense has defended a little bit different now. Now they let the end crash and they loop with the backer to contain the quarterback. And Neville releases. Jun looking at him the whole way. Jun now in trouble, fires, and he just gets rid of it. He had Neville over there, but Montana Tech had pressure coming in a big way. Gabe Zanetti coming yep. right up the middle that time, and he's got a pretty good case. They had a hold of his jersey. He had a good chance at a sack there, and he's, he's right in the <laughs> official's face saying, come on. And, uh, yeah, certainly a missed hold called there, but that pressure came right up the middle. Zanetti, a lot like Tyler Walker from Western, uh, you know, getting all his pressure from the defensive tackle spot. Third and 13 here. So Neville out of the shotgun. One back trips receivers up top, one here to the low side. Montana Tech brings three to the defensive front. Looks like the nickel package is in. Safety might be coming. Hand off to the tailback, and Neville gets past one defender, not past the second. He'll pick up four yards. That'll bring up fourth down and nine. And a punting unit here will come in for Western. Good reaction out of that linebacker set. Not to get too carried away in their pass drops. Remember that Neville is still in the game in third and long, uh, reacting well to the sprint draw. So Montana Tech will get the football back here as Western goes three and out. Five minutes gone so far in this opening quarter. Western leading 7-0. to zero. They scored on their opening possession. It was only the second time this year that Montana Tech hasn't scored on their opening possession. Snap a little low, able to dig it out. Pressure coming, kick is away. Ton of air underneath it, and no fair catch called for Torgerson. Torgerson out to the 25. Really close to blocking that, te uh, that punt, Montana Tech. A really, really close effort on the block. And good job by Torgerson fielding that ball. He didn't have to fair catch it, got what he could. 9.40 left to play here in the opening quarter. Montana Tech will take over at their 25-yard line. Thielen has yet to complete a pass as of right now. I would think if there's any advantage in this crosswind, it would be the direction that Montana Tech's going as far as getting any help out of the wind. Okay. And so we'll see if they don't come out and maybe try and throw the ball a little bit downfield on here on first down. Western's been beat up in the secondary. They got an outside linebacker out there, uh, Herkley Latu. Uh, playing cornerback. Out of the shotgun, Blake Thielen. Handoff going to go to Blake. Counts. Counts. Tried to bounce and just nothing there. Nice job in that defensive front again by Western. Those guys doing a great job in the trenches here in the opening moments. Number 99 down there, Tanner Harrell. Tanner Harrell making a lot of Shepard. noise. They're good in the defensive front. We knew that from the get-go mm -hmm. this year. Uh, really, really sound in the defensive front, and it's so good. I mean, you, you speak at nauseum. What an advantage that is. You know, you think of the Carroll Colleges and, and Westerns of the world. You'd be able to, to, to wreak havoc with three- and four-man surfaces. Play action. Thielen looking to throw. He stands, delivers downfield, has a man, and that one's going to sail incomplete. He was looking downfield that time for Trevor Hoffman, and that one 
sailed incomplete. And again, Western had really good pressure. Thielen uh, looked like he almost wanted to hold on to that for a second or two more before he did uncork, and he, he had pressure on it. Western got pressure, and Montana Tech got away with a hold on the right tackle there. Uh, you know, that right tackle was absolutely beat there, and uh, and Tech got away with a little bit of a hold and allowed Thielen to get rid of the football. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us here on the stream. People chiming in, third down and 11. Blake Thielen out of the shotgun. Tech with one first down so far. Pass across the middle is complete. Goes to Logan Kennedy, but it's going to be short of the first down marker. Kennedy had a big game last week at Rocky. You'll wonder why he isn't beyond the sticks when he catches that ball. You know, they're assuming two things there, that they can get him open underneath the coverage there, and if the ball is delivered and caught cleanly, maybe he can pick up that extra two or three yards on his feet. But a good job. That secondary from Western reacted and made the tackle short of the first down mark. Fourth down and three here for Montana Tech, and the Diggs will be forced to punt it away. The yardage markers on the far side are being blown all over everywhere with the wind down here right now. Snap a little low, able to dig it out. Punt is away off the side of the foot, and the wind just knocks it down, but it does take a decent tech bounce to the 42. Field position, boy, the wind just killed that thing. Time Unbelievable out. bounce. That Radio. ball was the essentially the shanked, you know, with side spin, but it grabbed that turf and, and darted, you know, uh, in between the sidelines there. He picked up another 10 yards of roll, you know, just to make it about a 25-yard punt. Again, thanks for joining us here. It looks as though we have a timeout on the field, so we'll take one as well. Western leading 7-0. to uh, We're back here to Bob Green Field after community this. community partners such as Montana Tech Athletics because of the commonalities of goals that we have for the Butte community. With Tech Athletics, we look at it as a way to not only provide great things for the community, whether that's attending football games, volleyball games, basketball games. It also helps Tech Athletics to have further outreach to bring in more athletes, more students, and really add to the diversity of Butte. Butte Auto and Montana Tech Athletics. We're gonna do great things together. Nucor is a, a great company. Um, they care about their people. They care about the environment. I've never been restricted to, to fall in a box. I've never been told that I can't do something. I saw it as a great opportunity to develop a career. You create your own destiny at Nucor. We're building something bigger out here at Nucor. Come join us. Eight minutes, eight seconds left to play here in the opening quarter. And Western's offense will come out and take over possession here. Jun right now, two of five through the air, 50 yards, one touchdown. Jun with the first snap, and they're going to run quick pass out on the left-hand side, completes, and that one out to Trey Mounts. Mounts will pick up a couple positive yards. Yeah, and he gets to beat Ben Windauer. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, there's a couple guys out here that just, you know, it's one thing to tackle. And it's another thing to tackle and make it hurt. <laughs> That's like Morley and Windauer. Yeah. You know, when they tackle, it's it's like inflict a little pain with this thing. Yeah. Uh, second and nine officially here for Western. And they're going to go empty. Two receivers up top, three to the bottom. Nobody in the backfield. Montana Tech will rush five with the blitz. Jun looking downfield. Ton of air under it. Pass through the hands of Mount. Incomplete. Really close. And Trey Mounts. Mounts again got in front of his uh, defenders. Mount. Threw his hands incomplete. Mounts is a handful. Yeah. He is a handful. He's a good wide out, good route runner, has good speed. That ball, you could, you just have to believe that the wind probably affected that thing more than anything. But he had, you know, and it, it's not great room, you know, but he just had a step uh, on, on his uh, defender and – Jun's pretty accurate to this point today. Third down and nine. Jun wanted to go quarterback draw, and he gets hammered, and he'll go down for a loss. Jun, that's going to be a loss of two as he tried to run it on the quarterback draw, and he was hit immediately, and I believe Harmer was the first missile there to meet him. Yeah, the disruption in the backfield that time. They had a little game up front, a little tackle and twist, and Zach Trumbull got, you know, took away his, you know how you, you talk about like on inside zone, force that miss or change of direction in the backfield and that slow down, that's what Trumbull did. So fourth down and long here for Western and they will be forced to punt it away. Tech, nobody uh, in a three point. They'll bring a little pressure. Punt is away. Good a kick. good one with the wind. Return starts at the 15 yard line. Torgerson out across the 20 to the 21. 
So again, thanks for joining us here on the stream. As, uh, we've got good people joining us uh, throughout the country here, people sending us text messages and beyond. Uh, we have to uh, certainly send kudos to Coach Brian Solomon and the Montana Tech volleyball team as they wrapped up the Frontier Conference crown last night. Their first, this class, I mean, they've been so good. But this is this class, these group of ladies, their first conference title. So uh, congratulations to them as, as they win the Frontier Conference crown and uh, get ready to roll. And once again, the most overlooked best coach in the state. Oh, he's the man. Is, uh, you know, Solomon, we had I hope he's conversation, not listening. conversation in our front room this morning. I was telling my wife, you know, talking about Coach Solomon. So Montana Tech, two backs, and uh, Blake will hand it off to Blake, and Blake counts straight ahead. Not a whole lot there, maybe a yard, possibly two at most, as he runs into the waiting arms of that uh, Western defensive front. Second down and nine here for the Digs. Winterburn will check in. Blake Counts will go out. You know, it's a, uh, a you tight offensive set, two backs in the backfield. Western really condensed in there. I mean, you really do need block on block, hat on hat there. And uh, Western's playing really good in the defensive front right now. Big I time. Mean, they're big, they're playing big, and they're playing fast. Two receivers right, tight end right here for Blake Thielen. Western, four-man defensive front. Pocket holds, Thielen downfield, pass complete across the 35, out to the 38-yard line, and getting up with the football is Hoffman. Hoffman on the deep curl that time, just uh, and he's going to get the respect out of anybody lined up over him, you know, because he is a deep threat. That time he sought off a good vertical release at about 12, 13 yards, and, and uh, spot-on pass by Thielen. Hoffman. I asked the uh, football coaches yesterday just how many NFL school or uh, squads have been here to look at them, and they say you're right in that 20 range to talk to them about playing at the next level. First down and 10 here for Montana Tech. Hoffman, of course, rewriting the record books at receiver here for Montana Tech historically. Handoff, play action, and wanted Hoffman, and boy, you can see the wind pull that thing backwards a little bit. Incomplete, brings up second and 10. 5.35 left to play here in this first quarter. Western leading 7-0. to zero. Good coverage that time. Braden Swank didn't really get drove out of there at right corner and was able to, to just, you know, technique-wise, technique get out of his back pedal, drive on that ball. That's just a good throw away by Thielen. So Montana Tech right now, nine plays, 31 yards of total offense. Blake Thielen out of the shotgun. Thielen 2 of 4 for 25 yards. Three-step drop. Thielen looking to his left. Airs it up. That one's overthrown and intercepted. Western going the other way. Across the 40, 35, 30. Down the right side. Cut back at the 20. And down to the 12-yard line as Braden Swank, the sophomore, will haul down the interception. And Western will be knocking on the door. Yeah, you got to notice that if you're Montana Tech. Western's showing quarters coverage, but they're rolling into a three-deep coverage. They did there. And... Uh, uh, I think they thought maybe they had that that deep wide area, you know, an opportunity for a completion, but Western rolled their coverage and it led Swank into that deep outside third and just an overthrow of Swank's right there to Johnny on the spot, make the pick and the return. Thielen's second interception on the year thus far and the Western Bulldogs will take over in the red zone here. As the offense comes out here, John Jund, they'll mark it at the 13 yard line. Neville in the back, man in motion. Attack heavy defensive front, play action, Jund fires. That one's going to be swatted down. You could really see what the wind's doing yeah. to that ball there. Uh, it, it, you know, that ball's thrown on a rope, but it moved probably two or three yards with the wind to the inside of the football field. You know, it's tough to catch in the wind. You know, like if you're catching the ball against the wind, you know, your timing's off. You know, your body's got reflexes, right? Your yeah. timing's off. A lot of times it just disrupts your timing and receiving it. And then when you're downwind, a lot of times that ball's on you an eighth of a second faster than you think. And it's just, uh, you know, it's a little crazy. You really got to concentrate and look that ball in. Second and ten, two receivers wide left. Hand off to Neville. Neville trying to bounce the edge. He gets past the first defender across the ten to the eight. Actually ended up getting pretty good yardage on something that looks like he was going to get stuffed trying to find the edge. A gain of five for Neville brings up third and five here for the Bulldogs. Great read but that time by Windauer. He got in the backfield, didn't make the tackle, but he slowed Neville down enough for his teammates to rally and make the tackle. But, yeah, that's uh, that was a nice read, uh, you know, from the offside inside linebacker, Ben Windauer. Third down and five here for Western. Western. 13th offensive play. They have 78 total yards of offense today. Out of the shotgun, Jund. Two receivers left. Man comes in motion, I believe is Mounts. 
Handoff to Neville straight ahead. Neville, nothing there. He'll get maybe a yard and nothing more. That's going to bring up fourth down here for Western. It was a great face-up tackle that time on the inside, and I think that Thank was... You. Who was that? Inside backer. It's a tough tackle to make. T tough tackle to make. I can't get that number. I saw James Newby come off the bottom of the pile, but let's see what Western, the offense as of right now, staying on, but they're going, they're taking their time here to get this play in. You know who it is? Greel. Okay. Yeah, also, Larry Greel. Greel. Okay. Fourth down and four here, and now Western's going to call a timeout. Yeah, that's a tough decision. You know, the field goal, you know, you know points are going to be at a premium today, right? But big-time crosswind, uh, big decision for Western. They want to call timeout and take a look at timeout. it. 3.50 left Western. to play here in They're this opening quarter. Western leading 7-0 to zero as we make our way through a Saturday. Again, it is senior day here for the Digs. Coming up at the halftime, we will hear from Coach Kyle Sampson as he'll join us and talk about his seniors in his own words. Uh, that will take up the entirety uh, <laughs> of halftime. So, uh, Montana Tech is a place for also, opportunity and innovation where determined doers do thrive. Montana Tech uh, Athletics is committed Facebook, to providing like transformative experiences for our students there, while striving for excellence uh, across they, all programs. Our goal is to enrich and expand our programs facility. and facilities uh, yeah, while delivering the one-on-one -on -one attention and family environment that's a hallmark for Montana attack. As we look forward, we're excited to embrace growth and are driven to provide a championship experience for our student athletes, our campus, our fans, and our view community. We have a vision for the future of Montana Tech Athletics and cannot wait to share more throughout the season. You're going to get you're going to get the best out of them. So a 25-yard attempt here for the Western Bulldogs as they have the field goal unit in from the right hash mark. Again, a 25-yard field goal attempt. Western leading 7-0. to zero. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up. The kick into the wind is good. So the Bulldogs will add three more. So off the turnover, the Bulldogs come away with three more points. They lead 10 to 0. So the Bulldogs up over Montana Tech 10 to 0. Frontier Conference action here from Buttes. We'll take a break. We're back here after this. Hey, once again, welcome back here to the campus of Montana Tech as the Ore Diggers taking on the Bulldogs of UM Western here on a Saturday afternoon. And again, uh, congratulations out to Coach Brian Solomon and the Montana Tech Ore Digger volleyball team. Nationally ranked, I believe, number 15 in the country. They wrapped up the Frontier Conference crown last night with a great win over Northern. And again, I mean, you, you look at, you know, this is a team that has gone to Nationals and won some big games at Nationals over the last couple of years, but this is their first Frontier Conference crown. They've always gone as, you know, the, the number two team out of the Frontier Conference, if you will. Uh, so a, a tremendous accomplishment for them. Uh, and, and really what was a great day yesterday. I mean, the Montana Tech women's basketball team officially got started with Coach Jeff Graham. Uh, and I'll tell you, wait till you see – uh, the defense that Coach Jeff Graham and Coach John Thatcher have put together with these ladies. It is its one of the most beautiful symphonies I have seen in my life, and I cannot wait to see uh, the future of the Montana Tech ladies in basketball. I didn't know until we were in the tailgate that JT was going to be on the bench with Coach Graham, so good get, Coach. Low line drive kick. Squibb goes past the first line all the way back to the second, and it goes out of play. Was it touched by an up back? And it looks like... Let's discuss this. Was did it was it touched by a Montana well, Tech player? Because he, if it was, he made a play on it, but the ball never really, you know, changed its rolling motion. 
So it's what I mean. You can attempt, and if you don't make contact with it, but yep. that that uh, penalty is going to stick here. Montana Tech's going to start this series at the 35-yard line, I believe. So the digs will start with good field position here. Kind of like me playing shortstop in Little League. <laughs> <laughs> the intent was to hit the ball with my glove, but it didn't <laughs> always happen. <laughs> Head down. That's why you ended up in right Montana field all the time. Is that right? Yeah. Miss playing the fly ball. You bet. So they do bring it out to the 35-yard line, and Montana Tech's offense will get rolling here. The digs trying to find some uh, balance here in the offense side 11 plays 31 yards they have two first downs is all and they'll bring them out and get ready to roll they started pretty slow last week as well they're trying a bunch of you know a bunch of different offensive sets here but Western's just been so good in the defensive front they're just having trouble getting across the line of scrimmage out of the shotgun Thielen play action rolls out passes downfield complete to Hoffman Hoffman across midfield down to the Western 47 yard line so Hoffman with his second catch of the day, and Hoffman comes in. That's catch number 44 on the year. Now over 700 Holding. yards receiving on the season on the for offense. Hoffman. Got Ten a yards from here. the previous spot. Okay, so uh, eliminate those numbers, please. Looks like a, a hold, but you know when we were talking in the pregame, you know what did you expect to see? That was a little more what I expected to see: yeah. zone fake, bootleg, shorter throw and catch in the wind and. You know, it looked like Montana Tech had everything they wanted there. You know, Western has done a great job getting pressure here right now. We'll see what Tech does to try and uh, get away from that. First down and 20. Thielen going to hand it off to Winterburn. Winterburn stretches the corner, gets a good block, finds his way across the 30 to the 31. That'll be a gain of six, bringing up second and 14 here. And again, Winterburn at tailback, his second carry. He has seven yards on the day. Yeah, stretch play to the boundary side, and that's what Winterberg got a heavy dose of last week at Rocky on that last drive. So he's comfortable running it, and you could see that. I mean, did you see, see a couple of those cuts? They're subtle, but there's just a little more freedom in his running than we've seen this season. Second down and 14 here for the Digs. Thielen tried the hard count, now looks to the sideline for the play call here. Blake Thielen. At quarterback, we did see Jet Campbell come in, lined up at receiver there for a moment. Thielen looking left the whole way. Airs it up downfield. Hoffman for the comeback. He'll drag the pile across the 45 for first down yardage. Great second effort by Hoffman. He looked for where that first down marker was, and then just pulled the pile to move the chains. I like him so much on, you know, those driving routes where he's, you know, running curls and stops. I like him so much because went to eat. No, he secures the ball real quick. He's a hands catcher. Yep. Secures it real quick. But what gets lost is he's 6'4", 6'5", 215 pounds. He's a load to bring down. First down and 10 here for the Diggs. Twin tight right. And Jet Campbell goes in motion. Thielen will hand it off. And Winterburn finds the edge. Nice stiff arm, but still is tripped up. That's a nice tackle that time as uh, Jaden Amasil gets uh, into his feet. Amasio. So Amasio with the tackle. Getting into Winterburn's legs. Looked like he had a lot more room than that, but, you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, that's one of the big differences, say, in Winterburn and Blake Counts. That's the tackle that Blake Counts makes a conscious effort to run through. Yeah. That, you know, you can watch him. He drops his eyes and drives that leg out of there, out of that attempted leg tackle, and he gets away so often. My score update shows Rocky and Northern 0-0 zero, zero at the half. Second down and eight. Hand off, goes to the tailback. Winterburn straight across midfield. And that will be a gain of three. Brings up third down and five is my guess here for the Dicks. That's a little more of what, you know, a few of these previous plays have set up. A little more that inside zone. Now that you've tried, you, you've tried and successfully run the stretch play a little bit, a little boot action pass, a little, uh, you know, three-step drop, Hoffman on a curl. All that kind of loosens those defensive backs and uh, uh, linebackers and uh, they're not as eager to get up there and stop the run. They're down at five. Alexander checks in at receiver. And Lander Smith goes out as the uh, lead blocker. You see Wyatt in motion. Play action, looking to throw. Thielen moves, throws it downfield. Pass complete, flag down. And uh, Torgerson across the 40 to the 39, but this is coming back. You have to assume it's in that hold territory. That flag was thrown almost as far as the football was. Into the wind, mind you. Yes. So what was third Holding. and five? Number like on the long offense. Dart. Ten yards from the previous spot. Third down. So that one will come back against Tech. You know, and it was, you know, I hate to say it, but it was one of those penalties. Thielen had rolled away 
from the protection and was getting the ball delivered. There was a hold, but it was behind him and kind of at the witching hour there. Yep. That, that that's the that's the play they're supposed to eat. You know, it's a it's a non consequential hold. Third down at 15 here for the Digs. There under 30 you. seconds remaining in the opening quarter. There you go. I'm going to go easy on officials. Because <laughs> you're about ready to become one. <laughs> Three receivers, one back. Blake Thielen out of the shotgun. Thielen, three-step drop, pressure coming. Thielen across the middle, finds Torgerson. First down yardage and more to the 36-yard line. It amazes me they can still make that completion. How many third and 15s has Montana Tech picked up this year on that route to Kyle Torgerson and Kyle Torgerson alone? And they still find him. And it was a greatly, a really, really well thrown ball by, by Thielen. Yep. You know, touch it, it was zipped enough to get in there before the safeties could react, but had enough touch to clear the underneath coverage. And the other side of that is there was heavy pressure. That pocket was really starting to get thin, and Thielen just threw a dart. First and 10, and that's going to do it for the quarter. So we have 15 minutes in the books right now. Western with the lead. Montana Tech driving. 10 0 our score. We're back here to Bob Greenfield after this. Back here once again to the campus of Montana Tech, Dr. Joven being honored and being recognized here. I don't think we're going to allow him to retire. Countless, I, don't, I don't think we can. <laughs> countless efforts out of him, uh, hours uh, over the years, you know, going clear back into the 90s when I was coaching and, and he first arrived on the scene. Uh, yeah, a dedicated medical He's professional. Just just uh, incredible. Uh, just a tremendous guy. He cares so much. Into football. Yeah. That's a, you know, well, I mean, he was, the, he was with the Steelers. Yeah. I mean, he worked with the Steelers as far as draft day for how many years, for goodness sake. So first and ten here for Montana Tech. We'll see if they can keep the momentum going. One back. Receivers up tight. Man comes in motion. They'll give it to him on the jet sweep. Uh, almost nothing there. Wyatt Ale Alexander gets back to the line of scrimmage. I think that's McNeil. Yeah. Oh, it is McNeil. Yeah. Sorry. Jaden McNeil. Uh on the end of it, made a great effort just to get back to the line of scrimmage. He was dead to rights, five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and made contact and spun out of there. So that will bring up second down and 10 here for the Digs. Let's see if they can catch Western rolling this coverage. Now they're showing quarters coverage here, but we'll see if they roll down uh, and, and drop into three deep. And that, yeah, they're going to. There you go. Play action. Thielen wants to throw. Thielen steps up in trouble. He gets tripped up and is sacked. The third sack of the day for the Western D front. And they get to him again. Thielen trying to escape, and he's taken down by Tanner Harrell. And that'll bring up third down and long. Again, the third sack of the day for Western. He made the right decision there to step up and run and attack the line of scrimmage. He still had the ball alive for a throw. But, uh, yeah, you have to credit Harrell. He didn't give up on the play and just lunged and swept at the feet and got Thielen to the ground. 
Just underway here in the second quarter. Western leading 10 to 0. See the Butte High, a uh, bunch of Butte High players are here on a visit today. I saw Jay Stanson and Trey Hansen in the tailgate. They're down there on the sideline. Great effort last night. Yeah. Came up a little short against Capital. One back, four receivers. Dropping back, Thielen wants to throw downfield. Almost intercepted. Hoffman plays good defense, honestly, on that one. You're exactly right. As uh, Braden Smith had the uh, opening shot at it. Braden and Smith. Hoffman takes it away. Smith out of Whitehall. 6'3", 240-pound redshirt junior, red junior playing linebacker. Uh, yeah, great play by Hoffman to become the defender there and get that ball knocked away. Fourth down of the punting unit is in here for the dig. So Western leading 10 to 0. Tech, their longest sustained drive right there. Western and comes up nothing. Western seen a couple low driving punts out of Almos today. Now they got two guys, one shallow and one deep here to return this punt. They back off the kick, end over end, going right, bounces at the two and just rips through the back of the end zone. So Western will get good field position here as they'll get the touch back. He and their offense will get another go. Puts a little more Media. air into that punt. He catches McNeil in stride. <laughs> McNeil wasn't too far away from catching that ball in the air down inside the five-yard line. Western 14 plays, 80 yards. Their offense will come back out here. John Jun thus far is 3 of 8 through the air for 50. Neville has five carries for 34. And uh, looks like we have a timeout on the field. We'll be back here right after this. <laughs> Nucor is a, a great company. Um, they care about their people. They care about the environment. I've never been restricted to, to fall in a box. I've never been told that I can't do something. I saw it as a great opportunity to develop a career. You create your own destiny at Nucor. We're building something bigger out here at Nucor. Come join us. Dude, Hudson, your new man cave is sweet. Come watch the game. Dude, they're gonna score. Man cave, lady lounges, whatever you call them, steals furniture has exactly what you need to make the room come to life. Shop our man cave showroom today for ideas to upgrade your bar set, fireplace, TV, recliner, furniture set, and refrigerator. Steals furniture, making man caves happen for 87 years. Back here once again to the campus of Montana Tech as Western leading 10 to 0. They scored on their opening possession. Got themselves a touchdown. Field goal out as well. Hand off up the middle. Neville, nothing there. That's going to be a loss of one. Backside again that time. Trumbull down the line of scrimmage. Slowing him up uh, from the backside. Trumbull's having a really good game so far here today. Second down and 10 here for Western. Again, scored on their opening possession, a, a touchdown, and then had a turnover. Montana Tech turned it over. They took over inside the 20 and got a field goal out of it. So Jund, one back is Neville, three receivers. Jund looking to his right the whole way. Stands, delivers downfield, has a man wide open, makes the catch at the 41-yard line. Nice job on the far side by Mounts that time to make sure his feet stay in, and Mounts just jumps right on top of it. Really good route that time. Mounts came off the line of scrimmage sh and showed a deep route, a deep post, and uh, ran the post corner. Uh, Jun throws him open to the sideline, but he got Jaden Downs from Montana Tech, at left cornerback, completely spun around. First down and 10, Western ball at their 41-yard line. Jund with three receivers down to the bottom of the screen. Jund, hand off to Neville. Neville gets through the first level, bounces left. He's across the 45 to the 46, a gain of five. Didn't feel like there was going to be a whole lot there, and uh, Neville is able to move the ball forward for a nice gain. Yeah, you got to expect, a, you know, four or five yards against this defensive front from Montana Tech is a victory, and you've got to be patient, and Western is. And it's done wonders for their passing game. Second and five, we'll say here for the Bulldogs. Tech brings four up. Linebackers, couple yards off. Looks like nickel package is in here for the digs, possibly. Man goes in motion. That's Mounts. Second and five. Handoff going to go to Neville. Neville. Yard, possibly two before he is stood up quickly. 
So third down and four here for the Western offense. Western so far, according to the official numbers, 0 for three on third down. That time Harmer getting up from safety to make contact. Windauer getting across, you know, from the from the, the weak side that time. And Gabe Zanetti having a good game there at nose tackle. Active. Third down and three here. Looks like changing the play. Western up to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers up top, tight end down below. Slot in motion, and the handoff to Neville going outside. Neville puts his head down, first down yardage. Boy, he turned the corner, had a little bit of daylight, and he will move the chains here for Western. Yeah, motion the inside receiver across the set and got one helmet out of there, and then just ran stretch to the boundary side. Neville's able to turn the corner and uh, pick up the first down. Second quarter action here, 10.50 left to play in this first half. As Western leading 10 to zero. Western was never afraid to take a strike. I wouldn't, I would expect to see maybe a shot downfield here in one of these early downs now that they're on the plus side of the 50. Jund four of nine on the day. He steps back to throw. Jund is gonna get hammered. James Newby comes across and drills him. The first sack of the afternoon for Newby. Second sack overall for Montana Tech here in the first half. That's what they're trying to get, a deep ball. Looks at trying to dial up Thomas again deep. And uh, the unfortunate thing there is you needed two and a half seconds to wait for that to pop. And in under two seconds, Newby was on the quarterback. Keyshawn James Newby, the Frontier Conference leader in the sack category. That is his eighth on the year. Second down and long. That's a loss of nine on the sack. He can move. Boy, he I can. I tell you what, he runs so well. It's hard to believe he's coming generally out of a three-point. You know, they'll stand him up like they are here, but a lot of times he's out of a three-point, and uh, he can chase anything down. Second down and 19. Now we're going to get a whistle and a stoppage of play. Western will call their second timeout. So Western leading 10-0, and timeout. they will call a timeout Western. here. We'll go ahead and keep There's it here as the Bulldogs up over Montana Tech 10-0. Again, coming up at the half, we will hear from Coach Kyle Sampson. He will walk us through all of his seniors in his own words. Uh, other scores, again, the only one I have, Rocky and Northern, this shows 0-0 at the half. Yep, and is that game at Northern? I want to say it, yeah, I believe it has you to be. never know what they're getting weather-wise yep. up there this time of year. Yep. I mean, if it's if it's as windy as it is here, a lot of times it's two or three times worse, you know, as yep, a kid truly. on the, yeah, eastern side of the divide. But, yeah, you just never know. So that certainly could be, you know, I mean, if you're looking at it from Northern's perspective, boy, you, you win that one, that gives you so much momentum going forward. You know, because they, they're at that point where, you know, you look at Coach Sowers and the job he has done, he needs buy-in right now. He needs guys that are going to keep the energy going all off season and get ready for next year, get people in that are going to want to be part of building it. Um, so, I mean, that would be that would be a heck of a fire to, to get things rolling into the offseason. A season like this is uh, you learn a lot about the culture you've instilled late into a losing season. Second and 19 here for Western. Jun dropping back. Blitz coming. Pass is caught across the 45. Mounts and mounts. Nice run across the 45 to the 44. That will be a gain of 11. And bring up... Looks like third down and about eight here for the Western offense. Big down for this Tech defense. That was interesting. Almost kind of a screen, but a couple yards downfield. You know, they, they had a blocker out in front. So Mounds comes back for that football. Yeah, that's called the offensive pass interference. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing how often it isn't called. Yeah. Third down and eight. Crowd getting loud here at Bob Greenfield. Sunshine, incredibly windy afternoon. As Jun brings him up, Montana Tech, three guys and a three-point man goes in motion is Neville. Jun downfield behind his man incomplete. Boy, he had the square in he wanted. He was looking that time for Isaiah Thomas, and that one way behind Thomas. He wanted Thomas to settle. He wanted Thomas to settle there, and Thomas kept running. The ball ended up behind him, but afterwards he's pointing at him like, just hook up in that window. Hook up in that window, and just a little bit of a communication error between the Thomas and his quarterback. So... Western going to punt and play the field possession game here. It's important for, for Torgerson to get this ball fielded. Doesn't necessarily have to return it, but get it fielded. Fourth down and eight here for the uh, Western squad as the punt team is out. Western, 22 offensive plays, 116 yards. And again, remember, 75 of those came on the opening possession. High kick, ton of air. Torgerson, fair catch at the six. <clears throat> so Montana Tech pinned deep. 
And Time we'll out. see what their offense Media. is able to do. Montana the Tech has run 19 quarter. offensive plays, 74 yards. Thielen is 4 of 8 for 64 yards, one interception. On the ground, Counts has three carries for 17 yards. Winterburn, four carries for nine yards as of right now. Yeah, Counts certainly isn't his usual self. He's he's definitely in some pain. Yeah. And uh, we've seen a lot of Winterburn Civil here engineers today. Build you know, I thought that might that, navigate. You know, the world you know, needs go back to that Northern game, I just kind of look at the order of the, the, the counts and with Winterburn. That you get, and then in the second half, Renner came in. Civil, Civil engineering and Montana Tech will really prepare for the future. He went down with what looked to be a pretty bad knee injury. So then I was thinking today, we might get to see a high product. If you decide that engineering is what you want to do, there's no better place in Montana Tech. We haven't seen him yet, but boy, he looked good. You know, he was fantastic yeah. in spring and fall. And then also you have to, you have to imagine Lander Smith going to get a little bit more in the reps. He's come in kind of in a blocking back farm, scenario. Yeah, he's a fullback. <laughs> well, for now, the engineers. <laughs> great grandparents, <laughs> all of their children uh, attended the Tech and graduated with degrees. Thing. Montana right, Tech is so something more like a family, and they really wanted me to come and be a part of it. Very rare you'll see a family of back deep at the six-yard line. One back at home is going to be Winterburn. Two receivers left, one to right. That's pretty rare. One thing with Montana Tech Montana really hasn't Tech done, they haven't Montana challenged. Sunday. Weston's got an outside linebacker, uh, Herkley Latu, out there, 6'4", 235 pounds at corner. He's out there by necessity. They've lost seven defensive backs this year, and they really haven't challenged him out there at, at right corner. Out of the shotgun, Thielen has time. Thielen across the middle and on target across the 25 to the 27-yard line. That's a well-thrown football. I thought it might get intercepted. But uh, coming up with it is going to be the big tight end for Montana Tech as uh, Logan Kennedy that comes was, up and rolls out. It was Torgerson. Oh, another, I apologize. No, that's okay. Another deep digger out. That's where Torgerson makes all his hay. But they looked deep. They tried to get Hoffman, uh, but uh, Alatu stayed with him. And so he, he, he just came down to that next level, found his crossing route. First down and 10 after the completion to Torgerson. That's his second catch of the day, 44 yards thus far. I'm not saying they have to throw it every down, but, you know, a few consecutive completions here out of this Tech offense would sure do wonders for their running game. And off to the tailback, Winterburn. Winterburn across the 30, fights to the 31, a gain of five. Eight minutes left to play here in the first half. Western leading 10 to zero. Montana Tech trying to move the chains consecutively here. They have five first downs so far today. 20 plays, 95 yards. And Winterburn stays in at tailback. Winterburn, nine carries, or rather four carries, nine yards. Yeah, and Western's showing half field again, but more than likely going to roll it down to a three-deep type look. Torgerson goes in motion. Owen goes with him. Thielen dropping back. He has time. Thielen crossing route. That one comes out extremely wounded. And Torgerson, the intended target, he got both hands on it. Same. Was it tipped at the line of scrimmage or did it just come out that way? Came out kind of wonky. Uh, uh, Thielen just, was just starting to get some pressure, wanted to drive that ball in there into a really tight window, and the ball sailed on him a little bit. And Torgerson, once again, just running that deep in route. You know, wherever the sticks are, he's going to go a yard or two beyond it. Third down and six here for the Digs. Two receivers right, one up top. 7.28 left to play here in this first half. Thielen out of the shotgun. Thielen, three-step drop, crossing route, and Torgerson makes the catch. First down yardage, and we'll get it whistled dead. Isn't that crazy? Again. It yep, is. Torgerson finds his spot. Thielen delivers, and the Digs will move the chains. And you have to credit the quarterback there, you know, because, you know, his eyes aren't on Torgerson the whole way. He's looking left, uh, you know, scanning the field and just moving. All he has to do is move a, 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 a dropping inside linebacker, literally, not even a yard, you know, half a yard, you know, to buy that space for him to find a window to connect with Torgerson. Two backs in here this time. One receiver on each side. Now Kennedy comes across to the right side of the formation. First down and 10. Montana attack at the 43. Thielen, play action, wants to throw. Thielen has time, looking, scanning. Now he'll move out, flag out. Thielen downfield, almost caught. Boy, coming down awkwardly was Hoffman. And there's a flag way downfield here. You're going to get some kind of illegal contact, I think, in this secondary. Maybe a defensive hold. That looks like that is going to be the case. Coach <laughs> Sampson was out chatting with the officials. You got an outside linebacker playing cornerback. Of course you're going to get a hold. Yeah. And the officials chatting it over here for a moment. There are two penalties. Oh, it's on going the play. against Tech. Holding. 
on the offense. Yep, so holding against holding Montana Tech. On the defense. Oh, so, so the offset. So we offset. had one on each side. We'll replay first down. I think I still only saw one flag down, didn't you? Yeah, I only saw the one down here near the 50-yard line. And there was a flag on each side, a, a holding penalty, and the offset. I only did see the one flag down. So you get offset, you get a redo here on first down. First down and 10 here for the digs. So right now, Blake Thielen, 6 of 12 for 97 yards. Tech has run 24 offensive plays for 111 yards. Yeah, you got to pair them up to 21 side here and get that attention, that safety's attention with number two here. Logan Kennedy, handoff, going to go to Blake Counts. Counts across the 45, pushes the pile out near the 47. That ball came out. And the officials, no signal yet. Of course, everybody on the field saying they have possession. The Western, the officials chatting. Western's going to get it. Western will get the fumble, and they will take over at the Montana Tech 47-yard line. Montana Tech with two turnovers here in the opening half. And Western leading 10-0 will take over at the Montana Tech 47. Coach Sampson pleading his case with the officials. And they're not listening. So first and 10 here for Western. The Bulldogs will take over at the Montana Tech 47. That is the second turnover of the day for Montana Tech. John Jund out of the shotgun. Too many bodies in the pile for us to see what yeah. was going on. No clue. Here. Handoff going to go to the tailback, trying to find something across the 45 to the 43-yard line. That was McPhee. I think McPhee's first carry here today. McPhee yep. will pick up three, maybe four. Good back. Is he out of Laurel? Uh, McPhee, Columbia Falls. Yeah, Columbia Falls, excuse me, yep. Yeah, they're next to each other. I can you see know, how you get, I get them mixed confused up. With, uh, <laughs> I get McPhee confused with uh, the running back, the backup running back at Carroll. Okay. I can't think of his name either, sorry. I can't either. Second down and seven. Ball at the Montana Tech 44-yard line. Tech brings four up to the defensive front. Jund stands. Jund in trouble trying to escape. He'll get hit hard. He'll go down for a loss of three as Jund is sacked. Yeah, that's an Eddie on top and uh, Trumbull down below. Trumbull got him by the legs and and uh, Zanetti polished him off. Third sack of the day for the Montana Tech defense as this, John Jund hold down. This Tech defense has really answered a couple sudden change moments and this would be another one if they can get the stop here on third down. Uh, another huge, you know, uh, Big play moment for this defense. It's been just answering the call all year long. Third down and nine here for Western. Out of the shotgun, Jund puts McPhee out. Blitz coming, Jund in trouble. He escapes to his right. Jund has running room. A guy to beat to the sidelines, and he gets chopped down. So Jund taken down at the 40-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down and four. Boy, great pursuit that time across the field. I think that's Jaden Downs. Got out that's of coverage. Play. But Downs are 20. I don't know who's. I uh, want to say that. Uh, no. No, it isn't. It isn't <laughs> Christian nope. Better. Yeah, that was down. Excuse okay. me. You can see it now. So that'll bring up fourth down and four here for the Western offense. Is the offense staying out? McPhee in the backfield. Western does have a timeout remaining. 4:45 left to play here in the first half. You have to stay composed here. Don't get drawn off sides. Jund puts McPhee on his right hip. Jund hands it off to McPhee. McPhee goes nowhere. Nowhere even close. That's going to be a turnover on down, so a big defensive stand for the Digs. Could be a huge moment in this game, and I just have to believe the last one out of that pile is going to be Zanetti. Yep, there he is. That's it. There he is. He's having a great game there at nose tackle. He's just raising a lot of hell in there. And he's all over the place, playing with high energy, and then, of course, Trumbull and uh, uh, Keyshawn James Newby all running off the field, but that is as sound as Tech can be in the defensive front, you know, with all the guys that they rotate in there. Yeah, Zanetti just having a monster as he comes over to the sidelines. So that'll bring up first down and 10 here for the Digs. 4.29 left to play in the first half. Similar to Rocky last week, down a couple scores late in the second quarter, and they came in and got a score. It's imperative, I think, for this Montana Tech offense to at least get a field goal here before the half. Kennedy in motion. Handoff going to play action. Thielen has time. Thielen downfield. That one is caught at the Western 46-yard line. Is going up and getting it and coming down as Torgerson again. Catch number four. He turned out and not in for a change. You know, <laughs> so much of his 
living yeah. is between the hash marks, but that time he squared it out deep downfield and a really, really well-thrown ball. They kind of flooded this outside zone. They went low, and then Torgerson was in the middle, a really well-thrown ball that time by Thielen. First down and 10 here for the Digs. One back, three receivers for Thielen. Again, incredibly windy afternoon here. Some sunshine, which isn't helping a whole lot. So Thielen looks to the sideline for the play call. One back, three receivers. Thielen, blitz coming. Thielen delivers downfield, had his man, and trying to turn it upfield was Hoffman. And it never did look back for that football as they were battling here on the sideline. That's Latu's job. you know. He, so when he's lined up over Hoffman, I talked to Coach Norris before the game from Western. His job is to make life tough for Hoffman to get off the football. And uh, they tried to run a little void route right there in the honey hole down around the 40, 35-yard line. But Latu did his job. He made a collision. On college football, you can make a collision with a receiver as long as the ball's not in air beyond five yards downfield. And that's what Latu did there. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Hoff turning, Thielen drops it off on the screen inside to Winterburn. Winterburn cuts it up 35-30 down to the 27-yard line. Nice cut that time by Winterburn. Nice play. Back screen. That's it. Finally. Nice play that time. Winterburn has a couple blockers out in front. He reads it excellently, and he'll move the chains. Really nice, nicely timed and designed play there. As much pressure as Western's gotten on Thielen here in the first half with that defensive front, you've got to always come back to back screen. Just don't allow them to pin their ears back every snap. First down and 10 here for the dig. Split backs, three receivers. Thielen looks to the sideline for the play call. Wind. <laughs> I almost just said it's picking up again, but it's just been howling here all day. Winterburn the back. Long snap count here. Thielen hands it to Winterburn. Winterburn, nice cut across the 25 to the 23. That'll be a gain of five on first down. Really good piece on first down. Winterburn sticking play side and then getting downfield and looking for a cutback opportunity about two or three yards downfield. And, uh, you know, he's met and met violently there, but Winterburn's running the ball just a little differently. He's just... You know, a little more purpose and a little more freedom, and I really like it. Tech, 28 offensive plays, 153 yards. Here you go, Vetter in the game, I believe. And it looks like Vetter is in at tailback. He scored on his first carry as an ore digger officially against Northern. And Vetter is in at tailback to the right side. And man in motion. Second down and five here for the Digs. Play action. They'll air it up here on the near side. Winterburn split out, gets the catch. He'll be chopped down at about the 16-yard line. That's going to be enough for the first down. Yeah, so a fresh set of downs for the digs. We'll play action in the backfield and the quick uh, uh, receiver screen to the boundary side. Good job by Winterburn. And I think that was Wyatt Alexander out there getting the lead block. That's the key there. You just got to get somebody upfield. Because that upfield guy's got to honor you enough to be blocked. I mean, if you're willing to put a pad on him. Because the second he just caves in on that screen, you just throw the ball to the lead blocker. That'll bring up first down and 10 here for the digs. Winterburn in the backfield again. Looks like Wyatt Alexander split wide right. Torgerson in the slot up top. And Hoffman all the way wide left. Dropping back, pressure coming. Thielen in trouble. Thielen moving, trying to escape. Thielen gets rid of the football at the last second. And luckily, that one falls incomplete. You could see the importance in Thielen's eyes of getting rid of the ball. You don't want to take a sack in that situation after a pretty momentum drive here to this point. And you know you want to stay at least within your kicker's range here and get some points on the board if you can before the half. So second and 10 here for the digs. Again, coming up at the half, we'll check in with Coach Kyle Sampson about his seniors. Yeah, Your Tech's got a, you know, you got to check to an inside running play there. You know, Western, the last couple snaps has shown too deep. There's one guy out of the box and you've got to believe, you know, the, the experience you have up front, single back in the backfield, you've got to believe that you can make first downs running the football. So first down, or rather second and 10, handoff going to go to Winterburn. Winterburn around the 10, gets a block, just can't turn it farther north, but he does pick up five, brings up third down and five. Yeah, he picked up half of it, and they had that opportunity on the previous snap, too. That honestly didn't feel like he got that far downfield to me. I thought, initially, I thought it was a gain of one or two, and then you realize he, he was able to move it up a little bit. Western defensively stretched it out pretty well, but that play was designed. It was started as inside zone, but Winterburn saw, you know, a slam by the defensive ends, and, and uh, 
you know, he just bounced it out, turned it into a stretch play. Third and five. Winterburn in the backfield here with Blake Thielen. Montana Tech should have it here, too. This is their eighth play of this drive. Thielen dropping back, looking to throw. Stands in the pocket, pump fake. Thielen has a ton of running room. He's still holding on to it, looking to throw. Thielen into the end zone. It's up and incomplete. He's got to run that football. He's got to run that football. He had the first down. All he has to do is just tuck it and go. So that will bring up fourth down here for the Montana Tech offense. 128 left to play in the first half. Boy, he had a ton of running room in front of him. He had first down yardage easily, if not points. If he doesn't have the first down there, he gets close enough to make it a better decision on fourth down to go for it on fourth and one, maybe. Two would have even been a stretch. I mean, he, he simply had a five-yard carry there. So the kicking unit will come in for the field goal try. They'll and put it down at the 17-yard line, a 27-yard attempt, right hash mark. Again, wind left to right. As we await the snap, snap and hold are good. The kick is up, plenty of leg, and it is no good. Wide right, kick goes wide right, and Western holding on to a 10-0 lead. So the Digs able to put together a nice drive, but nothing comes out of it, and Western's offense will have a buck 23 left to play here in the first half. They have one timeout time remaining. Out. Thielen was really media. lucky not to get that the ball picked media, off. He threw out it into it, just a, an absolute crowd of white jerseys there in the corner of the end zone. And it looks like we have a timeout on the field, so we'll take one as well. We're back here to Bob Green Field after this. company like Butte Auto that shares our mission of community partnership, making the Butte community a better place to be while being excellent in their field is a natural partnership that we're excited to be a part of. We're back here once again at the campus of Montana Tech as Frontier Conference action here on a Saturday at Senior Day as the Digs hosting the Bulldogs. John Jund and the Bulldogs up first down at 10, ball at their 19-yard line. Actually, right at the 20, excuse me. Jund flashes it right, pass complete, but hit immediately. <laughs> Great coverage on the far side that time. That's Keyshawn. That's James Newby, he comes up limping. They were expecting him on the pass rush. They dropped him into coverage. They, it's almost like they smelled it, knew the play coming out of the huddle. So Keyshawn James Newby blows that one up, brings up second down and 10. How would and you like that as a wide out? <laughs> oh, have him four coming five, at you. Four or five defensive end sprinting right down the line of scrimmage at you. Oh, he is just a monster. Leading uh, sacker in the Frontier Conference, currently sits with eight after one today. Now Sec they're going to rush him. Three receivers left, one up top. John Jun going to hand it off to his tailback. Neville runs right into a Montana Tech defender. And that's going to be a loss of a yard. Boy, Neville, he had one decent run out of the gate, and then since then he has had a tough time finding anything downfield. That was Keyshawn again. Timeout. Third down and Montana 11. Tech. Got their a little bit of a half. Half. Montana Tech yeah. take a timeout here, I yeah, hope. They did. They took their uh, first timeout. They have two remaining. You certainly want to make them any kind of a punt situation. If you can get it, you want to make them snap the yeah. ball. Yeah, by all means. 36 seconds remaining here in the first half. Thanks for joining us here on a Saturday afternoon. Frontier Conference action. Let me, uh, hold on while well, we've got a moment here. Let me take a look at our other scores if we have any updates here. Last update, I have Rocky leading Northern 3-0 to zero in the third quarter. And uh, no scores from the other games as of yet. But the other ones are both uh, West Coast. So later start time. Havers in its own time zone too, right? It has to be. Yeah. Yep. Santa's time. 
third down and 11. Ever, thanks, everybody, for joining us here on the stream, uh, not only today but throughout the season. Paul Panisco, Ron Haskett. Jay LaProuse uh, is uh, joining us from the confines of his couch. Is he? Yeah. That's nice. I think Tommy O is joining us from the confines of the Minneapolis airport since he was trying to go to Chicago for the Bears game and lost a, one of his flights isn't working. Third and 11, one back, four receivers. Jun, play action. Blitz coming. He gets hammered but gets rid of the football, and that's going to fall incomplete. Perfect coverage by Jordan Washington. They had him. They had what they wanted. Western had what they wanted one-on-one, -on -one, but Jun. Washington was <laughs> right on oh. mounts. And Tech came with a safety blitz. Was that Morley? <laughs> no, it was uh, uh, Naoki Harmer. Oh. Harmer just blasted John Jund. And that will bring up fourth down. So Montana Tech will get the football back here. As, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that was Naoki Harmer, just an absolute rocket What's in. that Angel? Is that zero? Yeah. What, no, it was, it was, or here on the near side? Yeah. Well, they, they were all given yeah. uh, pats on the helmet to Angel Sanchez. Okay. So the punting unit is in. Blocked. Ball into the turf. Montana Tech going for it. Down near the one. Picked up. Touchdown. The punt is blocked. They pick it up at the goal line. Montana Tech with a special teams touchdown. Make them snap it again. That's Whitcomb. Got the, I think he got the block and the scoop and the score. What a play by the Diggers special teams. They get on the board. My goodness, what a play that time. Blocking the punt, goes into the turf, picked up six points just like that. 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. Whitcomb just jogs off the field like it's standard Another routine day. business. Another day at the office. So the kicking unit is in. Western leading 10 to 6. Snap a little bit off. Hold is good. The kick is up, and the kick is through. 10 to 7 our score. The Bulldogs of UM Western leading Montana Tech by three. 25 seconds remaining. And it looks like we'll go ahead and keep it here. So, again, coming up the half, we'll check in with Coach Sampson. He will walk through our seniors. Maybe it was Harmer. Harmer's got some kind of decoration around oh, his he, neck. Yeah, he's got the uh, turnover chain gone, going on there. <laughs> I love this group, man. I, this secondary group is one that has just been together for what feels like forever. We don't have Jake Orvis uh, dressed today. He is uh, He's actually going to be out for the remainder of the season, the Young Billings senior product. Um, you know, just one of the best press corners in the conference, and he is not playing today. Uh, but you look at that that unit with, with Harmer and with Sanchez, and, and you look at all the guys that they have together, That that's a solid, good group. you got to feel for Jake Orvis, too, yeah. because he, he got injured on a just an, a great play uh trouble the quarterback from rocky got out it was a, i think it was a big third and long looked like he was going to get the first down and orvis came out of coverage and came up and just made a great play to stop him short of the line but you could see a couple things flail there yeah he injured himself pretty pretty good he was on, actually down on the field for 15 or 20 minutes uh and I, I couldn't tell watching the telecast i thought maybe he got knocked out but that wasn't the case and and he was able to walk off the field under his own power. But, uh, yeah, that was a scary moment, and we wish Jake the best. Yeah. He's given so much to this university over his his tenure here, and uh, just a shame he couldn't play on senior day. But I tell yeah. you what, he, he always left it on the field, regardless oh. of the year or the situation. Yep. And uh, you just wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah, just and so selfishly. You know, it's one of those where, from our perspective, I love watching him play, and I was lucky enough to call his games when he played Butte High when he was at Billings Senior. You know, I've just watched his career has just been amazing. And a tremendous young Montana man and uh, unable to suit up here for senior day. Kickoff will start the return at the five-yard line going left. Uh, across the 20 to the 24, flag down. Going to get a block in the back here or a hold. So Montana Tech with some momentum here going into the locker room. A special teams touchdown. I'd be real surprised if Western does anything but take a knee here. Go into the locker room with the three-point lead. But number 23, a lot of momentum on this Montana Tech sideline now team. after the block punt and a scoop and score. First go. So again, coming up here in a matter of moments, we will hear from Coach Sampson uh, going through his seniors. And again, uh, this is the uh, the abbreviated version. The other version I do have online. We can get you a link to that. It's on Twitter and other places as well. I'll get it to Coach Sampson for anybody that wants it. Uh, it's about a 30, maybe a 35-minute overall interview, uh, and uh, that's out there in the world for people to take a listen to. So we're off for halftime. What's the over-under on the amount of beers that I'll have at <laughs> halftime? Whatever it is, I'll go with the over. <laughs> always. God love you. Always go with the over. <laughs> 
So the offense is out here for Western. 20 seconds remaining here in this first half. Handoff going to go to Neville. Neville gets through the first level out across the 17 to the 18. I had to make your wife stay around <laughs> for that. <laughs> I was wondering why you were giving her the brake well, signal there for a moment. she appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> so we are at the half. Montana Tech trailing the Bulldogs 10 to 7. Frontier Conference action here at Bob Green Field. And as we mentioned, uh, let's hear from Coach Kyle Sampson talking about his senior day as it is senior day here for Montana Tech. So really excited to kind of go through this list, uh, talk about the uh, 14 players that we got and also our equipment manager that will be uh, walking on a senior day as well. And, um, you know, I just appreciate everybody out there that uh, has supported these guys and, uh, you know, really excited to have a, a huge crowd uh, for them on senior day against Western in, in a big time game with playoff implications. Uh, we'll start out just in alphabetical order here uh, with our guys. The first guy is Blake Allred. Uh, he's a linebacker for us. Uh, he's been a guy that, uh, you know, one of the absolute toughest guys on our team that's fought through injuries. Um, had some surgeries while he's been here, but uh, one of the most explosive uh, linebackers that I've been around as far as his overall speed uh, and a great leader. Uh, a guy that uh, is, a, is a huge part of us uh, keeping our guys together in the offseason, uh, always grabbing guys to get extra work in, um, and just a guy that I think has overcame a, a lot of things in his, in his, in his career here at Tech uh, to become, you know, uh, one of the better players in this league and also, you know, in my opinion, one of the best leaders that we have on this team and uh, Blake's a guy we're going to miss tremendously um, and a guy that uh, does it right. He's a he's a very guy or a guy that takes it really seriously every single day and comes to work with a great attitude and just a, a great representation of our program. A guy out of uh, Billings Senior. Second one there, uh, Jet Campbell, um, you know, extremely special to me being a guy that is, is with my position group and a, and a quarterback, you know, been a tremendous player for us and um, you don't you don't do what you do you know as a team without without quarterbacks and you know Jet's extremely close to me and, and my family and uh, you know he, he's fought through a lot of adversity in his career too with injuries one of the top three competitors that I've ever coached in my life and I can say that in a, in a 16 17 year career coaching and playing uh, I love Jet to death uh, he's had a tremendous career here winning a lot of games for us um, and a guy that uh, really raises the level of his teammates around him you know I, I'm excited to have Jet back for this last year and can't thank him enough for all he's done for for me and what a great way to end his career here with a with a heck of a season that we're having you know a kid that uh gives it all he has every single day and i can't thank him enough for that and jet's going to be a guy that's going to be extremely successful in his life because uh he doesn't know you know the word quit he doesn't know uh colton eliason uh tight end uh kid out of billing senior that came here as a wide receiver a guy that i have a tremendous amount of respect for um hasn't seen a ton of playing time on the field and, and easily you know, uh, could have a bad attitude. That guy comes to work every single day and, and just works his butt off and, and is a guy that's a great teammate. I know uh, the guys on our team absolutely love him. He shows up to work uh, every single day in the off season. A guy that's the ultimate team guy, um, like I said, that, uh, you know, just doesn't get a ton of reps on the field on game day. Uh, but to me, that's what Montana Tech's about. He's a guy that's a great student in the classroom. He's going to graduate here with a great degree. going to be extremely successful. A guy that doesn't, doesn't whine, doesn't complain, just comes out and does his job. And to me, as a coach, uh, those are the type of guys that you are the glue to our team where you're successful in years like this, where you have people that, um, you know, don't get all the notoriety as some of these other guys, uh, but are behind the scenes guys that keep our team together. Um, and I know that uh, our team really appreciates Colton. I know myself and our staff appreciate the hell out of him. Um, just a great guy that uh, is a huge part of what we do. And, and to me, this is the ultimate, you know, what, what Montana Tech stands for is guys that, that truly care about each other um, and do the right thing on and off the field. Uh, Zeke Frommel, the fourth guy here, uh, is a guy that came here as an offensive lineman. Uh, and then we moved to defensive line a couple years ago, and it's just one of the hardest workers that we got. You know, a little bit undersized as far as a D lineman goes, uh, but plays with great pad level, uh, great heart, uh, extremely hard worker. You know, just one of those guys you can truly count on. He's, he's been a, a rotational guy on the D line all year. Uh, he's made some big time plays for us and, um, you know, works his, works his tail off in the weight room. Um, but a guy that uh, also uh, brings a lot of fun and joy to the team. He's kind of a, a little bit of a jokester, and uh, you can always hear him on the bus having fun, laughing and stuff like that. You know, and, uh, but when, when it's time to work, he, he, he's as hard as they go. You know, he's also our work-study guy that does, does all of our laundry with another one of our seniors, Brendan Kinney. And so uh, he's a guy that goes above and beyond uh, to, make, to you know, make sure our guys are ready to go every week. You know, Zeke's a guy that we're going to miss tremendously. And another, another guy, just like I've said with all these guys before, I think he's like a 3.738 GPA guy that's leaving here with, you know, a great degree from the best school in the conference. So uh, really happy for Zeke and, and, and thank him for everything he's done for us. The fifth guy here, uh, Nauke Harmer, 
you know, in my opinion, uh, probably the best defensive player in the league this year. Uh, just flying around making plays. And he's done this for four years. I mean, everybody knows who Nauke is. And we've moved him around. He's played corner. He's played safety. He's played nickel. You know, he's running out on special teams. Uh, one of the most absolute sudden athletes I've ever coached and ever been around. Um, a guy that uh, doesn't know anything different than 100%. Uh, if, you, if you put Nauke in a walkthrough, he's sprinting. Uh, he doesn't know any different. That's how he plays. Uh, you guys have seen him. I mean, he makes plays all around the field. A guy that uh, I, I don't think we can replace Nauke. I think, you know, hopefully we, we can get – we got some young guys coming up. But a Nauke Harmer comes around, I think, once in 10 years in this conference. And just a, a tremendous kid that's worked really hard and just goes out every time and makes plays. And, and every, every week you're like, wow. You stop, you look at the film, you're like, how did he do that? You know, and I think a kid like Nauke, if he's if he's a couple inches taller, he, he he's he's playing at a different level. Um, he, he's as good as they come, in my opinion, of this league and at the safety position, and, and as good as I've seen. Um, and I've been in this league a long time, uh, but uh, he, he does a tremendous job, and a, a guy that uh, has a lot of fun doing it too. But some of his plays, his pick sixes, fumble recoveries, blocking punts this year. Uh, you know, one of the biggest hitters we have, and he's only 175 pounds. Um, just, just, a, just a missile out there, and uh, love the kid to death. And you know, what a tremendous player, and I can't wait to see him these next couple games and into the playoffs. Jack Hiller, uh, offensive lineman, uh, was our left tackle. He was our right tackle last year. Uh, and then when Hunter graduated, moved to left tackle. Uh, a kid that's just been a tremendous football player for us, and leading the O line this year um, as a senior. Um, you know, I think Jack's having the, one of the best years. Um, anybody in this league as an offensive lineman. I, I fully expect Jack to be an all-conference player. I think he's doing that. Uh, and, and it's not easy to move from the right side to the left side as far as, as a tackle, you know. Um, and Jack's just done that tremendously. Worked extremely hard uh, to get his weight up and, and be a really dominant offensive lineman. Um, you know, one of the smartest players we have on the team. A uh, great communicator and a guy that just has a ton of fun playing the game. Um, He's a great impersonator. <laughs> Loves to impersonate coaches all the time and, and former teammates. Uh, you know, you wouldn't expect Jack. Jack's pretty quiet, but according to the players, and, and I've learned in my three or four years with Jack, he's uh, one of the funniest, goofiest guys on the team and um, just a guy you love having around. He's always going to keep the mood light, uh, but a fierce competitor. Um, you know, once again, Jack's a great student. Uh, he's already got multiple job offers and, you know, one of those guys that uh, is going to be successful in all that he does. But. Uh, just having a tremendous year on the offensive line for us and uh, looking forward to seeing him play in the last couple games here as well. Uh, next guy, Trevor Hoffman. Uh, you know, everybody knows Trevor. He's been a tr tremendous career here. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> what can you say about the kid that's just done it for four years um, and has an opportunity to play at the next level, which is pretty dang cool coming from the NAI. But a guy that works tr tremendously hard, uh, has obviously made great plays for us at the wide receiver position. You know, I think he's a, he's a great student of the game and a guy that just comes out and really works, right? He's a guy everybody knows, and he's, he's, you know, everybody knows he's the top player on our team, and everybody knows that he's the one guy when the scouts come around, they're looking at him, but you wouldn't know that uh, by watching him practice. He goes out and works tremendously hard every single day, you know, kind of like Nauke every week. You're like, man, how did he make that play? Uh, but a huge threat for us. Uh, but a guy that, you know, is the best receiver in this league, in my opinion, hands down. Uh, but you watch him play, uh, and I'll, for example, last week, one of the best blockers in the lock, in the conference as well. I mean, he's blocking downfield. Uh, he's not a guy that uh, takes plays off, and that's a true testament to him. And you know, he's got the talent, the size, the skill to go to the next level. But it's his heart and his toughness um, to me that uh, is going to make him. You know, it makes him what he is. Um, but just can't thank him enough for for all he does for us. And he's been a three year captain, which is pretty impressive um, at the wide receiver position. And uh, really excited to fo to follow Trevor. Uh, you know, he's a he's a guy that's pretty much got his degree as an engineer, could be successful doing that, but we're excited for Trevor to have an opportunity to go play at the next level, and we can't wait to see what he does. Uh, Brendan Kinney um, is a guy that's uh, transferred here the same year that I got here, um, you know, in, in 2019 in that spring, um, and a kid that's, uh, you know, just a, a great young man as far as a student, um, worked extremely hard since he's been here, uh, been a key special teams guy, gotten some reps this year at linebacker, um, but a guy that works extremely hard in the weight room, um, you know, a guy you can trust. He's a loyal to this program. Um, just one of those guys that, you know, Coach Williams this year uh, knows that he can learn any, all the spots in the, at the linebacker spot. Uh, not necessarily a starter, but a guy that can play all three positions, um, you know, and brings it every single day. Uh, Brennan's a guy that I have a ton of respect for. Um, for going through what he's gone through here um, and being a guy that was a walk-on that came here and, and really earned a spot and earned a spot on the team. Um, and just one of those guys that, uh, same thing, keep, keeps keeps the team together. Um, and just an extremely hard worker that does a great job. And 
Uh, same thing with Brandon, you know, getting graduated with a degree here. Um, you know, this is his last semester here at Tech, be graduating in December, um, and will be very successful in, in everything that he does in his life. And I can't thank Brandon enough uh, for what he's done and what he continues to do for our team. Uh, Brandon Morley, uh, you know, a, a safety. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, has, has been a guy that, been a huge leader for our team. I think, you know, one of the top leaders of our team, the communicators. Um, you know, extremely, extremely great year this year in his senior year. Uh, he does have an opportunity to come back possibly. So a lot of these guys, actually, I forgot to mention that. You know, some of these guys are walking and they still haven't made a final decision if they're going to come back because of the COVID year, which is the weirdest thing ever, right? That these guys have been here for five years, but they might come back for six. So now I take every one of them back. <laughs> a couple of these guys, they know they can't come back. Uh, but Brandon's one of those guys that, that possibly could with a couple of these other guys that have that COVID year. But uh, just a guy that's really worked uh, for, for everything here. Um, you know, worked himself into a, a to be a starter, not just a starter this year, but a huge productive safety in our league, and uh, is, is a great tackler. Uh, does a great job getting us lined up in the back end, and uh, like I said, a, a guy that's a huge leader. I have a ton of respect for Brandon. Uh, he's a guy that's uh, truly uh, helped our team in the off season as far as setting the example, setting the standard for what we do. Um, just one of those guys that's always doing extra, doing extra in the weight room, getting extra film in, asking extra questions. You know, and like I said, a guy that's had a tremendous year this year. And another guy, sounds like a broken record, but tremendous student that, uh, you know, we're super proud of. And uh, Next one here, uh, Jake Orvis, uh, one of the best cover corners in the league the last couple of years. Uh, same things, fought through some injuries the last couple of years, you know, and, and I, I just think that one of, the, one of the absolute most talented guys in our team and one of the fastest guys in our team. And for being 165 pounds dripping wet, one of the toughest guys that we have every week. And you've seen this, Paul, for the last three years. He's going against guys that are bigger than him, taller than him, stronger than him, and they can't do anything against him. Uh, shuts him down. One of the absolute smartest football players that I've been around. That's why he can play corner. He can play safety. Last year he played nickel for us. He's like an extension of the coaching staff out there with what he knows about the game and, 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 and his understanding of the game. I think that's what makes him such a great player. He's a great athlete, can run and jump, but uh, his understanding of what offense they're trying to do is, is, is second-level stuff. And, you know, what a great guy. He's going he's gonna to go into the military. Um, after he's done so uh, you know huge huge thanks and kudos to him uh, it's kind of been a goal of his and uh, we wish him the absolute best of luck but uh, you know Jake's been a tremendous player for us a great kid that's worked extremely hard in the classroom and is going to be extremely successful and what a, what a cool way to you know finish his career and then go and serve our country you know ab absolute you know props and love for him for that and, and JL is one of my favorites he's a, he's a great kid and uh, just brings a smile to your face every single day um, he's an extremely positive guy, doesn't get rattled, and I sure appreciate him for that and, and wish him the absolute best of luck. And uh, Next guy, uh, Brett Robinson, uh, one of the absolute, you know, when you talk about Montana Tech diggers, uh, Brett Robinson is the guy. He's a, he's a you know, special teams ace for us. He's been on his special teams for the last three years, uh, on every special teams this year. Uh, doesn't get a lot of playing time on defense as a defensive back, uh, but, uh, you know, comes to work every single day. Uh, has been a huge impact on our special teams and on our team. Uh, just one of those guys that's a great leader. Uh, everybody trusts B-Rob, you know, another great student in the classroom, but a great person, you know, as high as character as there is on our team is, is Brett, you know, and I, I can't thank him enough. Comes from a, a tremendous family um, and a guy that, uh, you know, same thing, right? Some guys in the college, if they're not getting all the playing time on offense or defense, they, they hang it up. Uh, Brett's been a guy that stuck with us every single year. Uh, you know, could have graduated last year, but decided to come back for this year, which is pretty awesome, you know, and just does a tremendous job on special teams. Um, same thing, extremely smart football player and uh, just a bunch of heart and hard work um, and really appreciate Brett and all that he does for our team. Um, and also one of the one of the guys that when you when you reach out to guys that, uh, you know, you ask about volunteering, uh, Brett's always one of the first ones that respond. And what a great, you know, representation of our school out in the community um, and back home as well. Uh, next guy, Tristan Stauffer, uh, has been a three-year starter for us on the offensive line, having a tremendous year this year as our right guard. You know, same thing. He just keeps getting better and better and better uh, every year that we've had him here. And, and, and really a, a huge piece to our line. I mean, you know, we're leading the conference right now in points scored, points per game, and that's because of our offensive line. Uh, we've got great skill kids, obviously, and great quarterbacks, running backs, tight ends. But uh, the old line is the is the absolute engine that drives us, and Tristan's a big part of that. Extremely smart football player, understands techniques, understands defense very, very well. Uh, and once again, just one of those guys that's very, very quiet, uh, but a, but a big time competitor. He's played guard and tackle for us. Uh, you know, mostly guard this year, but just a, a huge piece to our O-line. 
Um, and just like I was saying with Jack, I mean, two pieces that are seniors on the offensive line that have done a great job leading us this year. You know, we're not where we're at without those guys up front. And some people, you know, don't necessarily realize how important the offensive line is. Um, and we've had some injuries on the offensive line this year. We've had to replace some guys. Um, you know, and Stoff and Jack have been two guys that have just, just kept everybody together. And we've had to bring some new guys up to play. And uh, the communication they've had with those young guys uh, to help them out has been awesome. And, you know, just a guy that's a, a tremendous person in the classroom. Really going to miss a guy like Tristan. Like I said, one of the probably one of the more quieter guys on our team, but an unsung hero as far as what he does every day. And to me, one of the best alignment in this conference this fall. And really, really proud of what he's done this year. Uh, next one here is Zach Trumbull, you know, big-time defensive lineman for us, a guy that uh, you know every team in the conference is trying to double-team. They know where Zach's at. Uh, had a tremendous year, sacking the quarterback, tackles for loss. Uh, one of the coolest moments this year for me was uh, you know, against Carroll where we line him up as a tight end, and uh, we do the fake quarterback sneak, and Caleb hits him. And that's one of the funnest things that we watch. My son, Bo, always rewatches that, and he just, he just talks about the crowd just erupting. I mean, we had 6,000 people in the stands that day, and – uh, fourth and one, and Trumbull gets to score a touchdown as a defensive lineman. And, you know, uh, talked to Matt Step, and you know that's like a defensive lineman's dream, right? To score a touchdown, and you know there's some cool, really cool pictures. You know, one of my favorites is Zach is coming from the other side of the field. He's scoring the touchdown, and you see Steps on the sideline with his hands up, just celebrating like crazy. And you know, from a D lineman that's our AD to another D lineman, that's pretty damn cool. And you know, Zach is a guy that's just so unselfish. He knows he's going to get double teamed a lot as a defensive lineman, but been a tremendous player for us. And just freakishly athletic for how big he is. Big time player for us. One of the best best D linemen in this conference and probably in the country this year. And you can move him around. He's big enough to play inside. He's quick enough to play outside. You know, he, he's just a tremendous player. And, and once again, another guy that's a great student in the classroom, great leader for us. You know, he's another captain that keeps our guys together, um, always rallying the troops. And the guy you can trust 100% that, you know, he's going to take care of the team off the field as well. People look up to him because of how he works and what he stands for. And just uh, super proud of Zach. And, uh, really excited for him, you know, next couple games and then going into his career as well off the field. Uh, yeah, going to be extremely successful. The last player here is Ben Windauer. You know, couldn't be more proud of a kid than Ben. Uh, missed two full seasons with injuries, back to back uh, season ending injuries where, you know, one happened in the, in, the, in the fall of 19, had to have surgery, came back before he got to play, uh, had another surgery. So missed two full years of football. And to come back this year, uh, spring ball, he was able to come back and get some reps in and then hadn't played in two full years, and now he's one of the best linebackers in the conference, bar none. If you want to put a picture of a leader and a worker, uh, Ben Windauer is the guy. And everybody knows that on our team. He's the glue that holds everybody together. For, for him to come back from the surgeries that he had uh, and to be able to play at a high level like he's doing right now, it's because he worked harder than anybody else. Ben's a stand-up kid. You know, He's one of those guys that you would trust with your own kids. Um, you trust with their lives. And, and Ben's extremely special to me because same thing. Two years out, he could have just, he's a great student. He could have, he could have got a job. He could have left and got a job this year. But not playing for two years and to be able to work that hard to come back for his senior year and to not only be on the team, but to play and to play at an all-conference level, in my opinion, is just a true testament to what he is. Uh, one of the toughest kids that I've ever been around and one of the most best vocal leaders and leaders by example. Uh, people want to follow a guy, they're going to follow Ben Windauer and what he does. And, you know, just a huge thanks to him and what he's done for our team. Uh, and I think our leadership has grown tremendously by getting Ben back in the mix after being gone for two years. And, you know, that's a big thing with him is even the two years that he was gone, he was still a big part of our team with the leadership. Even though he couldn't be on the field, he was pushing guys to get better. But, uh, you know, the, the absolute testament of a digger right there is Ben Windauer. Um, and, and super proud of him for uh, getting back, but also coming back and playing at an extremely high level. Uh, we're going to miss the heck out of him as a player, um, but as a leader as well. Uh, and the last guy is, is our equipment manager, Nate. Nate Dog. Everybody knows Nate. Uh, extremely hard worker. I think everybody in the dang state knows Nate. Uh, but uh, just really appreciate Nate and all that he does for our team. You know, all the things behind the scenes. Uh, comes with a great attitude. Everybody loves him. Uh, he's always just a positive guy to have around. Works extremely hard. And, you know, people like Nate uh, that takes care of all of our equipment, you know, those are things to, to run a successful football program. You need guys that care about that. He cares tremendously. And to me, that's to be the one thing I'd say about Nate is just his pride in Montana Tech. You know, a guy that's kind of he's going to have an engineering degree here. You know, came from a small town. You know, and just wanted to be a part of it, and uh, you know, became a, a huge part piece of our program, and not only our program, but just the the community on campus here. Um, just want to say a huge thanks to Nate and all he does for our team. You know, with the equipment, but just being a guy that's a super positive influence on all of our guys, and uh, just a really fun guy to have around. And people like that, uh, you need uh, Nate Hagelins on your team.
you know, to be successful and all the things that go behind the scenes that people don't see, all the hard work with our equipment, our jerseys, our uniforms, you know, making sure our guys are equipped every single day. Those are big things, and he takes care of all that and, and sure appreciate the heck out of him. And uh, I'm going to miss the heck out of him. Just more than anything, just, just his positivity and having him around the office and, and enjoying the day and our practice, goofing around with him, and uh, just an extremely positive influence on our team and, and, and in my life as well, and, and can't thank Nate enough. You know, I'd like to just end here with, you know, just a, a huge thank you and congratulations to this class of 2022. Um, as a group, their leadership and character to me is second to none. Uh, we wouldn't be here as a program right now without these great men. Uh, this group truly represents what Montana Tech is about. Uh, they're great players on the field, but even better off the field, uh, in the classroom and in this great community of Butte. Uh, it's been an absolute honor to coach these young men, and I look forward to seeing them succeed in everything they do after they graduate. I know they're going to succeed in anything they put their mind to, and more importantly, I know they're going to be great mentors, uh, great family men, great husbands and fathers someday, uh, which to me is the ultimate thing. I want to say a huge thank you to their families, the seniors' families as well. Uh, without them, uh, these guys wouldn't be here today. Um, and so thank you parents and, and grandparents and cousins, aunts and uncles, sisters, brothers, for all the love and support of these 15 young men and for raising such great young men, allowing them to be a part of our life here at Montana Tech. You know, and then lastly, you know, I just want to thank them from the bottom of my heart uh, for all you guys have done and all you stand for. Uh, you're, you're a true epitome of Montana Tech and what our, what our, what our football culture is about, and that's family. I uh, appreciate you, Paul, for letting me speak about these guys. They're, they're extremely special to me, and you know, I'm, I can't wait to, to watch these guys play these last couple weeks. So, again, Coach Kyle Sampson, uh, my thanks to him for, uh, for doing our – you know, it, that's one of those things that, that Haskett, we've done forever. You know, Coach Green and I started that thing, I believe, back in 1874, my first year uh, calling games. But it is one of my favorite things to listen to a coach – talk about the players because there is always so much more there that people don't know about and uh, those stories are special so again my thanks to coach Kyle Sampson his seniors that again is truncated a little bit there is a longer version out there uh, and uh, you know I've got it on my socials and, and we'll we'll make sure that the uh, football has it so for family or parents or anybody that wants it it's out on SoundCloud and, and you can hear it there I don't know how they get through it I could never done it you know I, I mean I can't imagine having to you know t talk about you know guys uh, Dave Glover, Darby McKee, Lorenzo yeah. Snyder, Davis Almanza, you know, the guys that uh, – Brad Blunt, the individuals that I coached, yeah. uh, you know, Chris Anderson, uh, Step, uh, just, you know, I don't know how they do it. it no, it would I be, agree. Uh, it would be really, really difficult. It's, it's even hard to think about, you know, talk about my old quarterbacks, you know, Willard, and Clonch, Crash Jensen. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how they can get through it. And, I, and I'll tell you this, and I, whether they want me to, to, to people to know it or not, they, they have a tough time. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, – anyway, so that's the situation there. Uh, first half numbers, <coughs> Western, 30 offensive plays, 124 yards. Montana Tech, 32 offensive plays for 166. Uh, we have had five combined sacks in this. We have had turnovers. The wind has obviously been a monster issue through the first 30 minutes of this football game. Yeah, Tech's made more offensive plays, but – they just can't complete drives. So the kickoff goes through the back of the end zone. Again, remember Western, like I said, 30 plays, 124 total yards. 75 of those came on the opening possession. Uh, so we'll see how this second half stacks up and gets ready to roll. Yeah, you've got to really tip your hat to the Montana Tech defense. A couple sudden change moments in the first half that they responded to and got Western's offense off the field and got their offense back on it. They've given them ample, ample opportunities, field position. You, know, you look at the fourth and short late in the first half uh, around the 40-yard line after the turnover, you know, just situations like that. You know, it's time for this Montana Tech offense to respond. So here we go. Blake Thielen will bring him out in motion. Torgerson comes across in motion. And the play-action pass going to go to Hoffman. He gets drilled immediately. Good read that time defensively stepping up as uh, – Corner comes ripping in there and knocks him down. Hoffman going to go down for a loss of one. Quarter, uh, Torgerson got the good lean block, stuck his guy. Just too many guys there. They just lost the numbers game there on the tunnel screen or uh, receiver screen, whatever you want to call it. Quickly to the line of scrimmage comes Montana Tech. Hoffman going to go wide left. Real heavy offensive front. Wester's showing pressure. Now we're going to get flags aplenty here. Montana Tech's lined up too tight, too wide, and a single back. Full start. You know, they got, six, they got opportunities. They're seeing a lot of three deep coverage. Um, you know, when I see three deep coverage, I think of one thing, and that's run the seams. Run two up the seams.
put some pressure on that free safety. Do it out of play action so you can freeze your linebackers just a step or two, and you can get some good open throwing windows. You know, that receiver may take a hit or he may not take a hit. You know, a lot of times it can go for six, but but you're seeing too much single high safety, three deep coverage to where they got to attack the seams up the field. In motion goes Torgerson. The handoff going to go up the middle to Winterburn. Winterburn across the 20 to the 22. That's going to be a gain of four. Neither team uh, any kind of efficiency on third down in the first half. Western was one for seven. Tech was two for seven. Time of possession, pretty close. Tech had the football for 16 and a half. Western, 13 and a half. You can get it here, too. Now, on the long yard and stuff, you've seen more of a shell-type coverage, uh, quarters coverage out of this Western secondary. But, uh, yeah, so there, I mean, your deep flats are open, and you can get some runoff and some wheel routes. Out of the shotgun. Thielen in trouble. Thielen turns and throws it up. It's intercepted at the 30-yard line. The second interception of the afternoon to Western as they will get the pick. Coming down with it is Braden Smith. Got a flag back here. You might get a roughing the passer here, uh, which would be a huge break for Montana Tech, even if the interception wasn't completed. Boy, and Thielen Thielen's down. Up. He gets up slowly. His helmet did get ripped off here. You're going to see Jet Campbell into the game here with a fresh set of downs, I believe. So Thielen talking to the officials. And he will have to come to the sideline here. Let's see what we get from the White Hat. Personal foul. So personal foul. Number 99 on the defense. Roughing the passer against Western. And Montana Tech will First remain down. in possession of the football. That's you a know, huge break for Tech. Well, it, it, and, and maybe it might have been in the way he was taken to the ground because it looked like the Western D front guy had a hold of Thielen as he was throwing it, you know, so okay. he should be able to complete that tackle in his defense. But, you know, anymore, you never know. Sometimes yeah. it's how you come down on the quarterback or how you throw him <laughs> to the ground. I and mean, so much to protect the passer. And for me, I was looking downfield. I I'd had uh, completely given up on, on watching the quarterback play. Handoff going to go to Winterburn. Winterburn across the 45. Good run out to the 48. That's first down yardage, a gain of 10. Yeah, I, I had watched. I was watching the football downfield. I was not watching, you know, what happened in the backfield. It was hard not to watch the football downfield because yeah. you knew it was kind of thrown up for grabs. First and 10, Montana Tech. Ball at their 46-yard line. We'll see if they can continue to move this football here yeah they're showing too high safety here so that's seven in the box you know if you pride yourself at all in your running game you've got to be able to run against this defense Thielen hand off to Winterburn again Winterburn across the 50 45 head down good run by Winterburn to the 40 a gain of 14 so a gain of 10 backed up by a gain of 14 for Winterburn he'll check himself out it looks like that's an offense that got a little talking to at halftime you know just about explosion getting off the ball that kind of thing uh, they're running Landon Smith out yep. there in the backfield so I would expect either yeah, I would expect either straight drop back here or play action pass and Landon in there as an extra blocker so Lander Smith in at tailback two receivers left. Hoffman here on the lone side. Western isn't going to be fooled. They're staying in a shell. Now they may rotate down to a three deep coverage, but they're showing half field right now. First possession here of the second half. Hand off to Smith. Lander Smith, head down, fights his way to the 35, a gain of five. Well, they might have to stop the game and throw a parade. They handed <laughs> the ball to Lander Smith. <laughs> didn't make him block. Sophomore out of Charlotte with his uh, first carry of the day. He'll come to the sidelines. Winterburn will come back in. So they uh, get the offensive play in. So again, Montana Tech did not score on their opening possession. That's only the second game this year. They have not. But they're putting together a nice drive here to start the third quarter. Two receivers right, one to the left. Jorgerson in motion. They play action it to him. They set up middle screen. Pass complete. Tight end across the 25, fighting his way down to the 22-yard line. He gets up, pleading his case that his helmet was almost ripped off. Logan Kennedy with the reception. He is so much fun to watch play. He is, there's just nobody, you know, he is to the offense what Naoki Harmer is to the defense. There's just nobody having more fun out there. But when K Kennedy gets his hands on the ball, he's like an inside linebacker that gets an interception. You know, always say they, they, they turn into the best running back in yeah. the nation. <laughs> That's how he is. He just, uh, he's got a lot of energy once that ball's in his mitts. First and 10, one back. And it looks like Lander Smith is back in a tailback here. Two receivers, uh, twin tight, I should say, right. And we're going to run Wildcat. Winterburn at quarterback. Winterburn, 
He has a blocker, Smith. Turns it upfield, and we're going to get a flag on the edge, and you have to assume this is going to be a holding penalty against the Diggs here. Didn't see much getting there. a little chippy. Now we're going to get a late flag. I was just going to say, this is getting – there's some, some words being exchanged. And that's a post – play violation so Tech's gonna uh, probably originally get walked off to first and 20 here but then they'll probably march it forward 15 yards and Tech will start with a new set of downs I think uh, probably around the 15 yard line. I'm with you honestly. So the officials chatting it over here 11 minutes left to play here in the third quarter again thanks for joining us here. I have a hard time believing the Montana Tech ball carrier got the personal foul from Lane on his back. He was the only one there um, around a bunch of Western defenders. So I would assume some kind of uh, unnecessary roughness or, or taunting penalty will come against holding the Western defense here. So holding offense. against Tech is the, the first penalty, penalty, second penalty. Spot. Personal, personal foul, foul Western. So there the you defense. go. So it will come back that 10 and then go forward 15. From the spot. So it should go down to the 15. 11 minutes remaining here in the third. Yeah, 14, just inside the 15, probably the 14-yard yep. line, somewhere in there. And it is a fresh set of downs here for Montana Tech. So the personal foul does give them a fresh set of downs, first and 10. Nope, actually just first down. Well, what do we got going well, on? It might, yeah, I, don't, I didn't know how they would do that. I didn't know if they'd reset, reset the sticks or give them first and two here. And that will be the case. So the the holding penalty marches them back, and then the personal foul just moves the chains forward. If it would have gone past the marker, it would be. No, now they do move it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> it would. It, so it, yeah, and you know, so coming out here, you think you know Montana Tech take a shot here. I don't think you get greedy. I think you're getting what you want on the ground here. I think you stick with Winterburn. In motion, handoff to Winterburn. Winterburn straight ahead across the 10, fights his way to the 8. Winterburn running hard here in the second half. 11 carries, 65 yards for Winterburn. He looks different, though, doesn't he? He does. I mean, yep. wouldn't you agree with that? He yep. just he just looks a step freer, and it's really, really helped this offense. And explosive towards the line yeah. of scrimmage. Yeah. You know, it just directly just go. Second down and four from the 9-yard line. Montana Tech. And it's not just him. Don't get me wrong. Yep. That offensive front's uh, he obviously got a little talking to at halftime, and they came out getting off the football. And off to the tailback, Winterbird again. Tries to cut. Lost his cleat. He'll go down at the line of scrimmage. As he is met there at the line of scrimmage by Gus Hansen, senior out of Capitol. Well, it's important here. You got third and five. Everything in the playbook's in play. You know, Western will – I think they'll soft play this. I think I'll give them – Maybe a kind of a half field, a shallow half field look. You know, keep your inside zone, outside zone, draw running in play, but you don't want to take a sack. You don't want to make life any more difficult on your kicker here if you get in a field goal situation because uh, the field goal ties the game up. Better in at tailback. Two receivers each way. Out of the shotgun, Thielen. Man comes in motion. Looks like Logan Kennedy. And he will stop on the right side. Handoff play action. Thielen has time. Thielen into the end zone. Busted, and it's caught. Touchdown, Montana Tech. Hoffman goes up and gets it. That ball came out wounded, and Hoffman is able to haul it in. The Diggs grab their first lead of this football game. Used every bit of his 6-4 frame that time. Went up strong. Boy, there was a lot of want in that catch, wasn't there? Yeah, big a lot time. of traffic. And the thing about it is, Thielen stared him down the whole time. You know, you're lucky, but he put that ball where only his 6-4 wide out athletic as all can be well, he went up uh, strong and made that catch montana tech goes up 13 to 10 their first lead of the day great opening possession here of the second half western scored on their first possession of the first half tech scores on their opening possession in the second half and the kick is up pulls it a little left gets it through the uprights 14 to 10 montana tech with the lead over the bulldogs of um western Frontier Conference action here on a uh, Saturday afternoon. And I do not see our red hat anywhere, so I guess we'll keep it here. 9.38 left to play here in this third quarter. Thanks for joining us, Senior Day. And again, my thanks to Coach Kyle Sampson for uh, walking us through his seniors there at the half. So Montana Tech, 75 plays, 65 yards for the score. Thielen now 12 of 20 for 153 yards. And his first passing touchdown here. Yeah, good drive. It took advantage of a big break, uh, roughing the passer. And, again, you know, I never watched it through. But, yeah, I mean, it's just there, there's varying types of roughing the passer. Uh, you know, I think the defender 
taking Thielen to the ground there uh, was justified. You know, I think he had a hold of him as Thielen was releasing the ball. But, you know, a lot can happen between there and the ground and how they land on the quarterback and so on and so forth. So maybe that was the case. But uh, uh, you can't dis you – know, I mean, you, you can't hammer on the fact that Western made a good out, uh, aggressive play, but Montana Tech got the call and, more importantly, took advantage of it. So Montana Tech getting ready to kick off here. As I look on the other side of the field, John Jund is warming up for the Bulldogs. Bear with me for a minute. My <laughs> headphones mess with my glasses in a bad way. Holy moly. So again, very windy conditions. We do need a holder here again to hold the football on the tee. Yeah, and you can see it. The Lowry, this is the one direction he kicked earlier where he didn't reach the end zone. He's been pretty automatic in kicking that thing beyond five, ten yards deep in the yeah. end zone this year. But if the wind is hurting in any direction, it would be this direction left to right as we look at it. Montana Tech converted on three third downs that possession. And over end kick. This one will hit right in front of the goal line and get there. Barely. <laughs> Had a little backspin on it. Yes, it did. Hello. Are you going to go give us our second golf analogy of the broadcast, if you don't mind? Boy, yeah, I just, uh, that looked like a good, you know, solid golf shot that was, or not solid, but hit a little thin, so it had a little bit of forward kick on it. I, uh, Sean Ryan, golf coach here at Montana Tech, came in and kind of berated us for we only had one golf analogy in the entire first half, uh, and I think he was a little upset there was only one. You ever seen him hit a golf ball? No, I never have, if you can believe it. He pounds it. I, he pounds it. You can see that. I mean, he played every golf course yeah. in Montana, for goodness sake. Yeah. Poor if guy. If I hit it off the tee like he did, I would have went right <laughs> behind him. <laughs> I do not pound the golf ball. Uh, first down and 10, Western. John Jund out of the shotgun, bring mounts in motion. Montana Tech coming with a blitz. Jund flushed out of the pocket, going to his right. Airs it up downfield. And that one, uh, Montana Tech, James Newby gets to him as he throws that football, but he threw that thing way before he wanted to as Tech brought a ton of pressure up the middle. Yeah, they had good. Uh, uh, A-gap blitzes and Newby looping around behind him. Uh, they had a whole host of people coming right up the gut, right in Jun's face. Jun's did a good job. He rolled out of there, and uh, he had one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline, but you have to credit Jordan Downs out there. or Jaden Is it Jaden or Jordan? Jaden. Jaden Downs out there uh, in coverage did a nice job sticking with his receiver, forcing an errant throw. So that will bring up second down and 10. Handoff going to go up the middle and off to the races is Neville. Neville at midfield, 45, 40, 35, down to the 30-yard line. Neville down to the 26-yard line. Huge run for Neville. Really the first daylight he has seen today, and he will take a big one down to the 26-yard line. I think it's just the recent big plays against Montana Tech, just stuff literally right up the gut. That time it was Neville, but the only big plays they gave up against Rocky last week were trouble on a quarterback draw right up the middle. Okay. I mean, um, other than that, they've been sound, but they, they've been exposed uh, just a couple times. Just, I mean, literally between the guards, yeah, either either with the running back or the quarterback in the last couple weeks. First down and 10, Western. John Jund out of the shotgun, wants to throw. Stands in the trouble, starts to move right, airs it up, and pass complete down to the 16-yard line as he gets it to his receiver that time. And hauling in that reception is going to be Blake Sentman. Sentman, a senior out of Eugene, Oregon. He'll get his first catch of the day, and that'll move the chains. Whatever became of McKittrick from Ennis, remember? He came in and played, I think, as a true freshman at Western. Yeah, it, he and felt I like he was. And I think he would still be college eligible, wouldn't he? Or I would was think that so. that that long ago? Boy, COVID really screwed a lot of things up. Yeah, it, it messes timelines up in a big way. First down at 10, three receivers. John John handoff to Neville. Neville picks his lane, and he'll push the pile down to the 12. So both teams opening with nice possessions here in the second half. Jund will bring them up second and five as they look to the sideline for the play call here. 8-16 left to play in the third. Montana Tech leading 14-10, grabbing their first lead of the ball game here this last possession. Pretty good push here on first down. Just inside zone. Got hat on hat up front and... Neville leaned forward, didn't look like much, but five yards later, he's looking at second and five. Tight end goes in motion to the left side. The defensive front shifts to the right. Hand off to Neville again. Neville gets hit behind the line of scrimmage and taken down. That's Angel Sanchez. Yeah, Sanchez steps up and fills. Oh, That's going to be a loss Blake, of one. Blake Allred, excuse Was me. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Blake at the linebacker. Angel, I, I got used to Angel wearing number 20. 
Yeah. Uh, last year, I believe it was. Now he's wearing oh, number now he's zero. zero. And all red's <laughs> 29. It's tough to, <laughs> tough to tell whether that's a zero or a nine, that second number on Tech's dark jerseys. Third down and five here for the Bulldogs. 14 to 10, the Diggs with the lead over the Bulldogs. John out of the shotgun. McPhee in the backfield with him to his right. Two receivers left. Down, er, in motion is Mounts. John Jun wants to throw behind his man by a long way, and that's going to fall incomplete. Boy, held on to that and yeah. pump faked it once and then let it go and just missed his man. Western's running offense out here on fourth down. If you're Montana Tech, you got to stay on side. You don't want to jump off sides here. Uh, I think field goal is the play here. I think if you're Western, I think you try and make it a one-point game. Field goals could, you know, become really important here down the stretch. Fourth I'd be surprised if Western snaps this. Fourth and five, Jund out of the shotgun. One receiver left, tight end left, two receivers wide right. And Neville in the backfield. Jund sends Neville out. Jund in the pocket, in trouble. He's running Jund forward. He will get first down yardage. Great read by John Jund, and the quarterback will keep him alive here on fourth down and five. He'll rush for six. Tech had everything they wanted there. They had it covered, but Jund, Jund read it, didn't panic, found himself a lane up the middle, and was able to make contact and stay on his feet. You know, contact was made short of the first down mark, but but Jund just wasn't going to be denied. Nice run that time by Jund. 6.48 remaining here in the third. Yeah, Western Tech, up. Tech's been good in man coverage. I think you... You give them a lot of attention, line of scrimmage, and trust Jordan Washington and trust Jaden Downs there on the edge, one-on-one. -on -one. Jund handed off to McPhee. McPhee straight ahead gets one, possibly two. And they will mark him down at the four-yard line, second and goal from the four. Yeah. Physical play on the inside. Holy man. Yeah, Tyler Little in there in that defensive front. They got another deep front guy in there. They got Zanetti, Little. Can't get all the numbers. Uh, yeah, Zanetti, Little, look like Greel's in there. And Keyshawn. Jund up to the line of scrimmage. Western three receivers. Mounts comes in motion. Jund going to run. Jund behind the back, turns it upfield. Jund gets in for the touchdown. We talked about that. That was That's so it. key in their run last year is being the willingness of Jund to run just off tackle power plays behind a lead blocker. And uh, they ran it to perfection there. Jun doesn't even get touched from four yards out. So Tech scores on their opening possession of the second half, and Western will answer. 5.49 left to play here in this, uh, in this third quarter. Western nine plays, 75 yards, six points. Kicking unit is in here for the PAT. Wind blowing right to left across the kicker. As John Mears will look to add one here. Snap and hold are good. Mears pounds it through, and the PAT is good. 5.49 left to play here in this third quarter. Western gets the lead back. Bulldogs up 17-14 over Montana Tech. We're back here to Bob Greenfield after this. Time out. Media. Now's the time to get into Butte Auto and custom build your own ride just the way you want it. Choose from nine brands and compare them all at one location. Don't wait. Take advantage of our VIP appointment or stay where you are and shop easily from ButteAuto.com. At Butte Auto, we believe in exceptional service and an easy buying process. Easy buying process. Contact one of our four dealerships and custom build your next ride at Butte Auto today. Nucor is a, a great company. Um, they care about their people. They care about the environment. I've never been restricted to, to fall in a box. I've never been told that I can't do something. I saw it as a great opportunity to develop a career. You create your own destiny at Nucor. We're building something bigger out here at Nucor. Come join us.
5.49 left to play here in this third quarter. Back-to-back -back touchdowns. Tech scoring on their first possession here of the second half. Western answering. And both, honestly, with solid drives. I mean, front to back, both really put things together both on the ground through the air. Made completions and, and uh, made big runs. Neville, of course, the biggest run there. 49-yard run for uh, Neville. He has 101 yards on the day on the ground. End over end kick, drifting with the wind, goes out of bounds, and Tech will bring it out to the 35. Tech's given up 100-yard rushers three games in a row now, I think. The quarterback from Rocky had yeah. over 100. Yep, he went and then for. You go back to Yates, right? Was that a couple weeks ago, Southern Oregon? Yep. I wonder how he's doing. Kick out of 200 bounds. yards that day. Remember, and, uh, yeah, he's got injured. Solid. And, and I believe he's back. Okay. From my understanding, I believe he is back. So the Diggs offense will get ready to roll here. Thielen, 12 of 20 through the air for uh, 153 yards. He's thrown one touchdown, one interception. He's been sacked twice here today. Winterburn, 12 carries for 61 yards on through the air. Torgerson has four catches for 71. Hoffman, four catches for 34 and a score. So Tech offensively coming out. Thielen, two backs with him. Good old pro set other than the, the pistol type shotgun. And the play action, handoff going to go to Winterburn. Winterburn trying to stretch the edge. Boy, nothing there. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage before he is run out of the field of play. And looks like Latu, the linebacker, one of the first there to make contact. Yeah, and he's lined up at corner. They have, uh, <laughs> I'd suggest if you're going to try and run the perimeter, don't run at the outside <laughs> linebacker. Throw Just it him, the corner. Yeah, yeah, run at the corner, throw <laughs> at that bad linebacker. You know, I, I think that's, uh, that's, that's valuable uh, knowledge there. Second and nine, Tech up to the line of scrimmage, trailing by three. Winterburn stays in at tailback, two receivers wide left. Out of the shotgun, Thielen hitting on 60% of his passes today. Thielen downfield. He's early. And there's a big collision before the ball. It's intercepted as Wyatt Alexander he was early. got hammered. He got hit early. Yeah. And it looks like Western's going to get the football, but Wyatt Alexander was hit long before the football was there. Yeah. And that will be uh, interception, and that's going to go to the Bulldogs, it looks like. Officials Boy, they show that on, if we get an instant replay of that, he was hit early. Alexander down here, so Western should get good field position out of this. This will and also it looks be the like second media timeout of the quarter. We're going to get a timeout on the field. 5.09 left to play here in the third quarter. Western leads by three. They have the football at the Montana Tech 35-yard line after the turnover. And with the timeout, we will take one. We're back here to Bob Greenfield after this. here once again to Bob Greenfield as uh, the turnover will go to Western. Yeah, still didn't ever get a replay there, but he was hit early. And subsequently, you know, he got blasted from the back and he was hit by the ball. Yeah. <laughs> he was hit so early he couldn't even make a play on the ball. That ball jumped in the air, intercepted. So Western will start with a short field here at the Montana Tech 35-yard line. So the Digger D comes out. John Jund will bring the offense for Western out. Jund is 7 of 16 for 93 yards on the day. He's thrown one touchdown. They'll put the football down and be ready to roll here. They stack up two receivers far right. Montana Tech showing pressure from four. Now they'll bring five. Hand off to Neville. Reverse. Here on the near side, Mounts. They have a lot of running room. Mounts downfield across the 20-15. Tripped up by his own man to the 13-yard line. They run the reverse, and Mounts gets huge yardage. Great play there by Angel Sanchez. He came up and took on the lead blocker. And it put a shot on him and kept both his, you know, kind of both his inside and outside arms free. And Mounts ended up tripping over his own player there, but it he, it's a touchdown-saving yeah. play from Sanchez without making the tackle. First down and 10. Jund out of the shotgun. Jund, one back, three receivers. 
Tech showing blitz. Here it comes. Jun looking left the whole way. Stands, delivers downfield. Great catch. And they will signal touchdown. What a catch that time by Western as Benedict, Elijah Benedict, turned, got both hands up, and hauls it down. That's a great catch by that young man. Yeah, and even a better throw. Yeah. That ball couldn't have been put in a more perfect spot. Jordan Washington's in great position there. Just didn't get his head turned. But, uh, yeah, that was a, a perfect throw by Jund. So the kicking unit is in here for the Bulldogs. 4.33 left to play here in the third quarter. Montana Tech had a ton of momentum going in at the half. They scored on their opening possession, and Western has grabbed a ton of momentum here in the last two possessions. So they get the interception and a touchdown off of it. And the PAT is up, drifting left and gets through the uprights. 4.33 left to play here in this third quarter. Western goes up by 10, 24 to 14. Frontier Time Conference out. action here at Bob media. Green Field. We're back the after final this. Final timeout of the quarter. Nucor is a, a great company. Um, they care about their people. They care about the environment. I've never been restricted to, the, to fall in a box. I've never been told that I can't do something. I saw it as a great opportunity to develop a career. You create your own destiny. We're building something bigger out here at Newcore. Come join us. Dude, Hudson, your new man cave is sweet. Come watch the game. Dude, they're gonna score. Man cave, lady lounges, whatever you call them, steals furniture has exactly what you need to make your room come to life. Shop our Man Cave showroom today for ideas to upgrade your bar set, fireplace, TV, recliner, furniture set, and refrigerator. Steel Furniture, making Man Caves happen for 87 years. Back here once again at the campus of Montana Tech as a Frontier Conference action here on a Saturday. Western scored a touchdown, got a turnover, scored another. Tech had grabbed their first lead. They were up, for, you know, 14 to 10, and Western has answered with a pair of touchdowns here in the third quarter. They have a ton of momentum as of right now. Last kick went out of bounds. We'll see if Montana Tech, I think, you know, I mean, if they get a chance to return here, Torgerson, and I can't tell, is that McNeil back there with him, McNeil? kind of looks that way and it's interesting the wind is blowing hard from right to left and they're lining up on the left hash mark so they're kind of uh there we go so a squib kick straight down the middle fielded jumping on it at the 20 yard line i was just going to say because that would have been interesting you're kicking you know you're shortening your field if you will because the wind is going to push it left and you set up as far left as as you can yeah they so the digs will start things off at their 20 yard line Thielen. Two interceptions on the day is thrown for 153 yards. I'm sure everybody's got their marching orders, but I don't think the play there is to jump on the ball. I think you field it. You know, there you got Jordan Jackson back there along with McNeil and Torgerson. Somebody's athletic, athletic, or athletic enough to pick that ball up and gain probably another 10 yards. First down and 10 here for the Diggs. Out of the shotgun is Blake Thielen. One back, three receivers. Going in motion is Torgerson. Handoff going to go up the middle to Winterburn. He'll get three. Winterburn on the day, 14 carries, 65 yards. That's Tanner Harrell. Had a really good ball game in that deep front for Western. Making the play there. Second down and seven here for the Digs. Four minutes remaining in this third quarter. Boy, a lot of the story's been told today, just literally between the guards defensively. You look at the games that Eddie's had for Montana Tech at nose, and then Harrell and... Uh, Walker there in the tight defensive front from Western. Roll out, pass downfield across the 30. Nice pitch and catch that time. First down yardage for the Digs. As Hoffman on the drag route across the 30, that's going to move the chains. Hoffman gets his fifth catch of the day. Western's done a nice job on that, that flooded zone package at Montana Tech. They've done a, a great job today of taking away the first level. We've seen Montana Tech come back to the second level to Hoffman a couple times. 
But uh, Western's done a nice job of taking away the easy throw and catch. First down and 10 here for the Digs. Ball at their 32-yard line. Handoff going to Winterburn. He pops the edge, has some running room. Winterburn cuts back at the 35, dives across the 40. Very near first down yardage, but it looks like he'll be just shy. He puts him in a decent waist down situation, second and short. So the offense looks to the sideline for the play call. Again, Tech was up 14 to 10 there to start this third quarter. And Western exploded for a couple of quick touchdowns. Montana Tech trying to get some of the momentum back. Hoffman comes here on the bottom. So you got two receivers right, one up top. I don't think Tech will mess around here. They'll probably just hand the ball to Winterburn and see if they can get the sticks moved on second down. Hoffman comes in motion. And the handoff to Winterburn. Winterburn moves it ahead and... He still might be shy. Looks like they're marking him tentatively a half a yard short of the yep. first down. That'll bring up third down here for the Tech offense. 2.30 left to play here in this third quarter. Looks like we have a final from Rocky. Rocky beat Northern 9-0. It's got to feel like a victory for Northern, you know. Has to. Yeah, has to. You know, it just shows you're making some strides regardless of the weather conditions up there. Zanetti's in the backfield as a lead blocker, and quarterback's going to keep it. He'll go straight ahead, and that should be a fresh set of downs here for the Montana Tech offense. Not really generous with the spot here. It looked uh -uh. like Thielen, or excuse me, that's Jet with the ball. Jet Campbell was run in to run the sneak. And that is the case. So Campbell will come out, Thielen goes back in. Didn't do him many favors on the mark. It looked like he was a yard past where it's spotted right now. Yeah. First down and 10, Montana Tech. Ball at their 43 yard line. Coming out in a tight formation here. Two receivers left. Well, you got three deep coverage here. Thielen, play action, wants to throw, airs it up, gets Logan Kennedy and he is cut down immediately. Nice coverage getting downfield that time for Western making the stop is Cody Whalen. And you can see Western, they're starting, you know, both safeties showing a little half field. That time they weren't quite as deliberate in showing it, but, you know, that uh, that safety in that case, it's Cody Whalen. He's just working down, waiting for first level. They have that first level stuff from Montana Tech defended really well today. Second down and 10. 80 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. Thielen. Two receivers wide left, one to the right. Western will bring four. Downfield pass complete, and that's going to be first down yardage again as a none other than uh, Mr. Torgerson down the left seam. That's going to be his fifth catch of the day. Put him up around 90 yards receiving. They call that pretty quick in the huddle, Torgerson down the left seam, <laughs> but they call it a lot. <laughs> they do. And they complete it a lot. Yeah. He doesn't – He. If it's, if it's within grab range, he's one of those guys that just is incredibly sure-handed. You can see what Western's doing here. Montana Tech should be able to get a read on this. Now, they're going to show half field here, but safeties walk more to the middle. You watch uh, number nine. He'll work down. This is three deep coverage. Winterburn has a lane. Winterburn across the 40, cut back 35-30. Winterburn down to the 27-yard line. Caleb Winterburn will go good for 18. And that will be first down yardage here for the Diggs. Yeah, so, yeah, first down, you're going to get that probably again. Western doesn't bring a lot of pressure. They feel they can get plenty of pressure with their four-man surface, and they have today. They've, they've done a good job. But, you know, on, on first down, you're seeing three deep. And on second down, uh, second and long, third and long, you're seeing quarters coverage. Tech is around 50 offensive plays for 277 yards. Man in motion. Out of the shotgun and handoff again to Winterburn. Nothing there initially. Winterburn trying to bop it to the edge, and he'll get two positive yards. Two more than I thought he was yeah, going to get. No joke. I thought he was going to end up in the negative side of things. Some big collisions right in the middle, and that sends us to the fourth quarter. So the Bulldogs of UM Western lead by uh, 10 points, 24 to 14 over Montana Tech. Fourth quarter is up. We'll take it back after this.
Hey, welcome back here once again to the campus of Montana Tech as we show 15 minutes left to play here in this football game. We're talking football with Coach Graham. We are talking football with yeah, Coach Graham. Yeah, he gets lost that he was a football coach in Belt as well. So, the boys yeah. of Belt heading into Phillipsburg and uh, taking down the Flint Creek Titans. He came in to educate me. Now I feel like all the BS that come <laughs> that's come out of my mouth is going to get called out. <laughs> So 15 minutes on the clock, Montana Tech with the football, second down and eight here at the Western 27-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Blake Thielen. Thielen, three-step drop, steps up in the pocket, now in trouble, Thielen's going down again. Thielen gonna be sacked for the third time here today. And that is a big one, third down and 15 here. Western's done a nice job getting to Thielen. He stepped up in the pocket, it looked like he had time, but I'm guessing that, I mean, that's a coverage sack. He stepped up, was looking downfield, nothing home. And uh, before he was able to do anything else, he was taken down. Well, what happens there is you get a little greedy. You want to throw the ball downfield. You hold the ball too long. He's got to know the situation there and not take a sack. Check it down to one of these short crossing routes. Take your two yards and live to see third and under ten. But uh, if he just didn't, he just, you know, sometimes you just get a little greedy. Torgerson in motion to the right side of the formation. Two receivers wide lefts. Dropping back Thielen. Crossing route downfield. He finds his man. Torgerson gets up ended, but first down yardage for Torgerson. Catch number six. He's up around 100 yards receiving today. And it was a deep in route. Yeah, what a shocker. <laughs> He's ran a deep out route once today. Yeah, he did. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, they could very well be choicing him there. Yeah. And the choice is generally to the inside, you know, the, the leverage situation yep. one time. And if, if they are choosing him beyond the sticks, the one time, that just shows you he actually is reading it. First down and 10 here for the digs. That's a monster conversion. Montana Tech now 5 of 10 on third downs today. Trailing by 10 points. Thielen waiting the snap, bobbled it for a moment, handoff. Winterburn is able to pick it up in stride, thankfully. Turns <laughs> it upfield. There's a flag down way behind the play. And we'll see what we're going to get here. I, th I don't think it was a hold. Was it a block in the back? So if, if it's a hold, it's way behind the play here. Holding. And it is going to be a hold call offense. against Montana Tech. It could have been uh, where my Stay eyes weren't, start. truly. So another holding penalty, Montana Tech. Take a look at penalties here. That's their fifth penalty of the day, which honestly feels low. It felt like there's been a lot more penalties. So that will come back to first down and 20 you're from still, the 27-yard line. You're still okay here. You're at first down. You got. You know, three just decent chunk plays here to move the sticks and get down inside the eight yard line, but you gotta execute, execute, execute. Fourth quarter action here in the Frontier Conference. Blitz coming, picked up well. Thielen, downfield, too far out in front of Torgerson. Ball floated on him a little bit. The wind blew it away from Torgerson. He had him, he's crossing the field. He had everything he wanted there. So that will bring up second down and long here for the digs. I'll tell you what, I don't hate here. You're probably gonna get uh, zone coverage, guys dropping, uh, eager three or four man rush. Tell you what, I think they come back to that back screen. They may get six points. I, I really like back screen here down in the red zone area. McNeil wide left, Hoffman wide right, Torgerson in the slot. They look to the sideline for the play call as they get it in. Fourth quarter action, Western leading 24 to 14. Out of the shotgun, Thielen. Thielen awaiting the snap, gets it. Three-step drop across the middle. Pass is uh, bobbled and dropped. Just Looking for Logan Kennedy. Yeah, he had him. Low. Logan will tell you he should have made that catch. It was a little behind him and a little low. But uh, tight ends make their living on tough plays. And uh, Logan's kind of kicking himself there. But, yeah, they had everything they wanted there. So third down and long here for the digs. And, again, normally, you know, you're, you're – Field goal is not a bad place to be, but with that wind right now, it's it's a different game out there with that wind hard out of the west. Well, you have to keep it in play and you have to trust it, but first and foremost, you got to try and go either get him closer here or try and move the sticks. They're gonna they're gonna take their time here and probably yep. take a timeout. The timeout is incoming here for the digs. A 10-point lead for Western Montana Tech has run 56 offensive plays, 288 yards on the day, and they will call a timeout here. And it looks as though we are going to keep it here as well. So, again, uh, as you mentioned, Coach Graham in the studio, in the booth here, I should say, congratulations to he and the Lady Diggs as uh, Coach Graham gets uh, win number one on the season. 
as they take down Dickinson in overtime last night. We're going to release the Coach Graham calisthenic VHS tape later. And what we're going to ask you to do is just mimic all of his movements on the sideline. Uh, and you will lose 40 pounds in the 40-minute workout. I heard it's legendary. It's I can't wait to watch it. It is amazing. But I will say, and, and again, just uh, being able to watch that game yesterday, uh, you wait till you see the effort uh, the ladies are giving. It's off the charts. How would you compare him to Drykozen? Uh, Drykozen doesn't even have a, 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 he has no dog in the match. He has no dog in the match. He's an interesting watch. <laughs> hey, Dryco is. Dryco is. He's yes. way I love the guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this is it's going to be a fun year. Uh, the the effort level that uh, Coach Graham is getting out of the ladies, their defensive pressure is off the charts, and it's it's going to be fun. And this then, like I say, the other side of that, Coach Brian Solomon and the Lady Digs winning the Frontier Conference in volleyball last night was a huge huge night for the Digs. Does his head get as red as Dessings? <laughs> <laughs> the shotgun feeling. Pressure coming. Thielen into the end zone. To the back. It's up and incomplete. Oh, you got pass interference. There's pressure all over. So that one falls incomplete. Brings up fourth down here for the Montana Tech offense. Yeah, it looked like the defender might have been there a little early. Jordan Jackson was the intended receiver. It doesn't look like he maybe thought he was pass interfered, but... So Jordan Jackson will come to the sidelines. Yeah, I don't like this. I th uh, the play here is try and kick the field goal. Uh, you know, this isn't the NFL. They're not going to gain another eight yards, you know, at the placement here. But uh, I think you trust the unit that won you the game last week. It would be a long field goal. You'd be looking at about a 45-yarder. And out of the shotgun, Thielen puts men downfield. And a crossing route down near the five. Caught! What a play by Torgerson. You go he for it there. He knocked it out of the air with you, one hand and pulled it in. You go for it there 10 times out of 10. Did I say that or did I say <laughs> kick the field goal? Was a, a great play catch. by Torgerson. Torgerson went up strong, just used his hand as a backboard and tipped it down to himself. That was a play of the year. He knocked it into his hands with his right hand and it fell right into his bread basket. Watch this. Instant replay, Thielen looking downfield. Torgerson goes up and takes it away from the defender and pulls it in. Plus, he was hit while he was in the air. Yeah. On fourth and 20, what a play by Torgerson. Catch number seven on the day. First and goal. Pro formation in the back. Handoff going to go to Winterburn. Trying to find the corner. Winterburn dives in. Touchdown, Montana Tech. Caleb Winterburn gets in for six. The digs are within four. What? That is all. Code. It, Torgerson's play. I mean, Torgerson is having a monster. Seven catches, 121 yards, and Winterburn finds Peter. Winterburn's effort there is straight directed towards Torgerson. Like, you're going to make that kind of effort. Watch this. So Torgerson converts on fourth and 20, somehow pulls that ball in, and the kicking unit is in for the PAT. Winterburn with that goes over 100 yards rushing. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up, and the kick is through. We have a three-point ball game. 24-21, Western up over Montana Tech with 12-23 left to play here in this football game. We have a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. We're back after this. Well, yeah. Timeout, media. Civil engineers build the infrastructure that you know the world needs to, to function every day. With the, the degree in the education that you get, you're going to land some great jobs. Civil engineering at Montana Tech will really prepare you for the future. Our students walk out with really high paying jobs. That's what we're all about. 100 year history of doing that. If you decide that engineering is what you want to do, there's no better place than Montana Tech. It's amazing to me that we have six kids in this family that grew up on a on farm, small ranch. We all turned out to be engineers. My great grandparents, all of their children uh, attended tech and graduated with degrees. Montana Tech it felt more like a family and they really wanted me to come and be a part of it. Very rare you'll see uh, a family of six engineers and married to engineers. So there's a, a bloodline there that's, that's pretty rare. 
Montana Tech is my family's solution. Welcome back here once again to the campus of Montana Tech Frontier Conference Football at Bob Green Field. Paul Panisco, Ron Haskett, and uh, head coach Jeff Cram joining us in the booth, a.k.a. staying warm. Lowry's gonna Otherwise, he wouldn't have anything to do with us. You know that, right? I mean, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't want to be up here at all, but it's cold outside. L Lowry's got a little adrenaline going here. I'd look for this one to land down near my house. <laughs> <laughs> so Lowry with the kickoff, a three-point lead for Western. Lowry approaches, Ooh. end over end, ton of air under it. It will land five yards deep. And that will go touch back here. So the Bulldogs will get another offensive possession. Western 41 offensive plays, 235 yards. Jund is eight of 17 for 107. He has two touchdowns. He has not thrown any interceptions. He has been sacked three times. Neville has run for 101 yards. And again, 60 or 49 of those on one play. Got to stay sound here defensively. You can't try and to do too much. You know, the defense is a true case of do your job and none other. Uh, you know, secondary, you got to be tight and smart. Uh, defensive front, you have to be disciplined. Uh, this this defense has shown they can get anybody off the field three and out if they just stay sound and assignment oriented. Jund out of the shotgun, tight end left, one back at home. Fourth quarter action, Jun going to roll out, looking left, rifle shot to the sidelines, pass complete. That's going to be a gain of about six. And actually, they'll mark it right at the 30-yard line, so a gain of five. So the offense. You know, you, you talk about kind of teaching principles. Montana Tech does a great job of containment. I don't know if you could see that time, but assignment-wise on the rollout, uh, Cole Wyant, at inside linebacker, he had no intention of going to the quarterback. He was going angled to contain the quarterback there. It's just, you know, you talk about how sound they've been all year on defense. You can see little snippets of why they are so sound. Second down and five, Jund. And the handoff going to go to Neville. Neville tries to bounce left. He gets through the first level. Across the 40, out to the 45. Great run by Neville across midfield. Down to the Montana Tech 46-yard line. The guy can run and the guy can he break does. tackles. I mean, you don't end up at Nevada, you know, out of high school if you're not a capable running back. You know, what led him out of there is a different story, but that guy can play football. He gets knees high and he goes hard. And he's one of those guys that hits full speed like instantly. You know, it, it isn't a ramp up or anything else. It's he goes and goes hard. First and 10 Western, another big run by Neville. 16 carries, 126 yards. First down and 10 Western. Montana Tech pressing up on the corners up top. Big cushion down here on the bottom. Jun going to hand it off to Neville again. Little shake and bake across the 40 down to the 37. It's another nice gain, though, a gain of about seven. He was about four or five yards downfield before he got hit. Good piece of running, but a better job of blocking up front. Western's getting off the football. They've put together, a, you know, quite a few good series here in the second half of this game, and, and you don't do that without good offensive front play. Jund. The other thing, they haven't left Jund kind of out to dry, if you will. You know, they if he's been throwing the football, it's been getting rid of it quick. They're not allowing him to get hit where he was sacked three times in the first half. Jun, three-step drop. Now he gets flushed out of the pocket to his right. Flag down. It's going to be a holding penalty. Jun across the 35-30. And this one is coming back as Montana Tech Trumbull was drugged to the ground that time. Yeah, Trumbull got upfield hard on kind of a bull rush and then took an inside move and got drugged to the ground, I think. Holding. I could just be making that up. And offense. that will be the case. So the holding the penalty spot. will back him up 10. Ten Fourth quarter action, Western leading by three. You have to know here defensively, Neville's still in the game. Second and long, uh, the success they've had running him. You got to keep, you know, inside zone, draw, that kind of stuff with Neville in your mind defensively. You got to really communicate, get quick pass run calls. Second and 13 here for Western. Ball back to the Montana Tech 48 yard line. Snap a little low. Jund pressure coming. Jund throw back as he hits McPhee. McPhee across the 40 down to the 36. Well executed play that time. Well sold by McPhee. A good blitz package by Montana Tech. They ran a serious game up front. And you have to credit Jund for standing in there waiting for his back to spring on his flat route. So third down and one for Western. A high percentage third down here, but Western one for eight on third down today. 
Tex made this stop earlier in the game, but you know th they've only run Jund on the power one time. I would expect to see Jund here. Montana Tech puts everybody on the defensive front. Man comes in motion. Jund keeps it himself. Jund gets hit hard. And this is going to be really close, depending on the spot. He's going to be a little short, I believe. He's going to be inside maybe a half a yard short. It looks like the the stick on the far side of the field looks like he had to break the 35. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they mark it short of the 35-yard line. So fourth down here for Western with 9-10 left to play in the ball game. Stay sound here. Don't jump off sides. I would expect that almost, I, I think I would expect the same play. I think John's st still the guy in play. I mean, you need everything here. That includes one more lead blocker, and that's what John gets if he keeps the ball off tackle here. So fourth down here for Western. They need to break the 35-yard line. John Jund out of the shotgun. Tech puts five in the defensive front. John going to run out of the shotgun, puts his head down, and he gets it. John down to the 34-yard line, and that will move the chains. Yeah, good job defensively by Montana Tech. But, you know, there's only so much you can do. You know, they made the stop on third and, and short. But, again, you know, that's a lot of beef up front. Plus, he's got a lead blocker. That's just quarterback power or ISO, whatever you want to call it. I never paid attention to those <laughs> terms. First down. It was a run. It was a run, and I didn't like it, Paul. <laughs> First and 10 here for the Bulldogs. John Jund out of the shotgun. Jund with, looks like Neville on his left hip. Man comes in motion across the formation. Snap a little low. Jund able to get it back. He's in trouble. Flushed out of the pocket. And he's taken down. That guy. Sacked. James Newby. That guy can just flat out go. Oh, I love he, this kid. He doesn't have a chance. And he, he never gives up on a play. And so many of his plays, have he's chased down from the backside, whether it's zone and a lot of his sacks just uh, a speed rush but he flattens out so well and he angles up so well that uh, I mean he's just unbelievable he, what a headache Glad I never had to coach against that guy sack number nine on the year for James Newby brings up second down and 15 here for the Bulldogs Neville in the backfield two receivers wide lefts and remember field goal Probably not in the cards here. Hand off to Neville. Neville gets the edge. Neville across the 25, down to the 22, and he's going to get first down yardage. On second and 15, Neville is going to move the chains. That's a big run for the Bulldogs. Well, so often late in games, you know, that's – I don't think that was stretch. I think that was just inside zone. But so often late in games, you know, when, it, you know, the intense moments, everything just collapses inside. So you see that inside zone – when you want to pop it, you just bounce it. You see it in the NFL all the time. You yep. see it in college, you know, Division One college all the time. They just bounce it, you know, because so much attention is trying to make the stop that there's a lot of room on the edge. First down and 10, Western. Two receivers left, one to the right. John Jund out of the shotgun. He's thrown for 124 today. Handoff going to go to the tailback and Neville. Neville pounds his way inside the 15 to the 14. Neville's getting more powerful as this ball game goes on. He's really hitting the line of scrimmage hard. Neville over 150 yards on the ground today. And that means his offensive front has good momentum as well right now. You know, you just play against someone, you know, regardless of how good they are defensively, you play against them enough. I mean, you understand, you know, that first step. How do I got to angle this thing to, you know, to get a piece of a Zach Trumbull or a, a Keyshawn James Newby? Clock running. That's the ninth play. This will be the tenth here for Western on this drive. They've eaten up 61 yards thus far. Hand off to McPhee. McPhee, nothing. So, again, 10 plays thus far on this drive for Western. And more importantly, they've eaten up six and a half minutes on this drive, leading by three. Wyant gets up limping a little bit. Made a great play there on McPhee. Third and one. This is a huge down. I think if you get the stop here, you do force Western to kick the field goal. I don't know what other choice you have. Third down and one. Jund will take it out of the shotgun. McPhee in the backfield with him. Three receivers wide left. Montana Tech brings five to the defensive front. Hand off to McPhee. McPhee cuts back, and it looks as though he will get first down yardage. He needed one, and they give him over two, it looks like. So first and ten, Western. And again, clock running. Play number 11. Can't they fall. have eaten seven minutes of this clock up. Can't fall asleep on the perimeter. They've done... Largely, this drive on the ground, uh, you just can't fall asleep on the perimeter. Neville back in at tailback. Neville has 19 carries, 156 yards. 
going to be a little tougher down here close to the goal line to get the edge. So they're going to try and do most of their work here between the tackles. First down and 10. Neville will release. Jund crossing route behind his man incomplete. Dangerous pass. Those, yeah. You know, passes behind tend to get deflected up. So that will bring up second and 10. First pass attempt we've seen in a while here. Play number 12. Montana Tech will sub out here. There you go, Nickel. They run Sanchez into the game. So Sanchez comes in here for the digs. And Kenny runs off the field. Second and 10, Western. 5.05 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Western with the football leading by three. Neville in the backfield. Three receivers wide left, tight end right. Neville will release to the right. Jun's going to run. Jun gets hit behind the line of scrimmage. And, boy, I thought initially that ball came out as James Newby is there again. Does he get a sack for that? On a, it look, he was going to run, right, right. but I but don't think so. It's tackle a quarterback for negative yards. Is that a sack or just a tackle for loss? Either or. It was a great play. I think we should give him a – we'll give him a sack in that one. Yeah, he's got 10 in our book there yep. front here. Third and 11 here for Western. Clock running. 4.35 left to play in the ball game. Western's uh, – Taking their time Taking here. Taking their time. They're probably going to let this run down and take a timeout. This is a big play. Well, they do get the, they do get bought now. It looks like they're going to come out of the huddle slow, and they will call a timeout. So Western will call a timeout here. 4:22 left to play in the football game. Western leading 24 to 21. We have a timeout and an this official timeout. So with it, we'll take out. one as well. We're back to Bob Greenfield after this. Hey, once again, welcome back here to the campus of Montana Tech as uh, the Bulldogs of UM Western chewing up the clock right now. 13 plays, 63 yards, but more importantly, eight minutes off the clock in this drive, leading by three. A huge third down here. They've uh, gotten a couple of them in. Third and 11. Got to watch back out here. So Neville in the backfield. Because it looks like Tech's going to play this pretty straight up, man on man. And they're going to bring something at Jund here, I think. Man in motion is Mounts. He's been quiet in the second half. Jund out of the shotgun. Play action. Jund rolling right. He's going to run this thing. Jund turns it upfield. He's across the 10, down to the 7-yard line. So fourth down here for Western. Looked like the John Elway pay, play, but it wasn't for a first down. They helicoptered him. <laughs> so that will bring the uh, special teams unit in. So they will try and make Montana Tech score a touchdown got to know your fake assignments here don't put anything past your opponent yep. know your fake assignments but montana tech's gotten close off the wide side edge here uh the last couple pat field goal attempts from so western what a timely chance this would be for a block 24 yard attempts from the right hash mark and again the wind left to right heavily to affect this kick western leading by three snap and hold are good the kick is up and it is through. Chips it into the wind, and Western goes up by six. 27 to 21. A ton of time left in this football timeout. game. So Montana media. Tech needs the, the touchdown to tie it up, possibly take the lead here. So Western now has run 55 offensive plays, 312 yards. If you're Montana Tech offensively, you just have to put together a drive. You got three and a half minutes, two timeouts. You don't have to feel – Yeah, I mean, here, let me put it this way. You have to assume this is going to be your last offensive drive of the, ball, yes. of the ball game, barring an early turnover. Yes. But uh, so you've got everything in your arsenal, you know, so the back's going to play. Winter, Winterburn's going to be in play. The run game's going to be in play. 
Uh, you just have to make good decisions. If you're feeling there at quarterback, make sure you're getting rid of the ball on every snap. Don't take a sack. Anything, you know, momentum driven, you just don't want to give that defense. 27 to 21, our score. Western leading Montana Tech. The Digs at number 20 in the country. And again, they have been in playoff mode since the uh, since the uh, complete conference bye week. And they have won their last two. Western has won their last two. Brian Larson is uh, calling Torgi to the house. So we'll hold him to it. So the officials chatting it over here again. A ton of time. 328 remaining here in this ball game. He's calling a kick return? He is calling a kick return. Oh. And my understanding, Brian Larson knows his, his stuff at times. He scored in the national championship game. Man. I would lead with that everywhere I went, personally. I think, I think he does. <laughs> he was one of those crazy D linemen we used to put on our on our power eye package. Okay. That seems to fit. Seems to be the proper mold. So Western will kick off here. Wind left to right. A six-point lead. Crazy football game. We've seen some big momentum swings. Starts here on the return, too. You don't yeah. want to get any penalties. You know, No block in the back, no hold. You just do what you can with it. See if you can start this thing maybe outside your own 30-yard line. So as they are ready to roll here, Approaching kick is away. Low line drive kick. Bounces through the first level. Picked up at the 13-yard line. The return across the 20. Trying to find the edge and just nothing out there. It's the return out to the 23-yard line, and the Digger offense will start there. Two timeouts, 321 left to play. So Montana Tech's offense, again, 59 offensive plays, 315 yards on the day. They ruined the kickoff return game when they outlawed the crossing wedge. Right well, we got called for the wedge yeah, last we home game. It, so. yeah. Although they hadn't practiced it in no. 12 <laughs> since, years. Since 1979. Yeah, they, they thought they would sneak it in. <laughs> <laughs> I so. forgot about that. That is <laughs> unbelievable. First down and 10, Montana Tech. Thielen has Winterburn in the backfield. Winterburn, 20 carries, 100 yards on the day, and a touchdown. Thielen is 17 to 29 for 212. Expect. You expect prevent here, but they are going to roll down into three deep. Blitz coming, handoff to Winterburn, and he is able to spin through the first level. Can't hold his balance. He'll pick up a yard. Looks like Harold's hurt. Looks like he might have yeah. hurt his shoulder. He's rolling around down there. Yeah, he's a hurting unit on the ground. Officials like Jordan out. Jackson will come in for the digs here. Both teams have been beat up with injuries here all year. I mean, which I mean, it's the Frontier Conference. I mean, that's. <laughs> That's the deal is you stack those injuries up and not see how good your seconds and thirds are. Not a shoulder. Looks like they're tending to that left leg a little bit. Harold, a 6'1", redshirt junior, 275 pounder out of Shepherd. You hope he's all right. Yeah. The 122nd meeting between Montana Tech and UM Western. That first time through is, what was it, uh, Montana School of Mines against uh, Montana Normal in 1925. There you go. No limp or nothing. Good. He's had a great game. Oh, he's been a monster on the yeah, inside. Played really, really well. Him and Walker. And Second down Howard. and nine here for the Digs. Winterburn in at tailback. You have Hoffman at receiver. Looks like Logan Kennedy is out as well. Torgerson on the other side. Torgerson's having the game of his life to this point. Seven receptions, 121 yards. No most doubt. of them acrobatic. No doubt throwing it here. Thielen, drop back. And oh. that one almost picked off. Wow. Well, I mean, wouldn't you expect that? They were going to Torgerson yep. on the uh, inside, uh, the deep inside in route there. Uh, you know, I, I, all I say is it's about time someone tried to run under it. That time, Braden Smith. Made a good break on the ball. 6'3", 240-pound redshirt junior out of Whitehall. He got both hands on it, just unable to reel it in. Third down and nine here for Montana Tech. So third and nine for the Digs. Western gets a guy off. Pressure coming. Thielen in trouble. Thielen's moving right. Thielen steps up. He's trying to stay alive. Thielen downfield. Pass too far out in front of his intended target. Incomplete. After all of the running in the backfield, he's able to get it downfield too far out in front of Torgerson, and that'll bring up fourth down. Fourth and nine here for Tech with 2.51 left to play. You got to kick it away, two timeouts. Hate to say it, but you have to. I mean, 
And as of right now, special teams is on the sideline, but the offense is on the field currently. As they signal in the play, 251 remaining here in the football game. Play clock down to 12, and the offense is staying out. They're going to end up having to burn a timeout here, I'm afraid. Play clock down to six. Thielen out of the shotgun. Play clock at three, two, one. Snap is not going to get off in time, and that is going to be a delay of game. No, they got the timeout. Did they get the timeout in? Okay. So Coach Sampson forced to burn a timeout on One fourth and nine. 240 left to play here in this ball game. That's their second and a half. Western leading 27 to 21. My goodness. Every year the Frontier Conference comes down to those last couple weeks. And you just watch the dance. It's incredible. So fourth down and nine here for Tech. I think we'll see we have other scores here. Rocky beat Northern 9-0. College of Idaho leading over Eastern 14-0. And Carroll leading Southern 17-3 at the half. So two games at half, Please both over in the Pacific side. Uh, Carroll leading Southern 17-3. College of Idaho leading Eastern Oregon 14-0. And Rocky beat Northern 9-0. Fourth down and nine here for the Digs. The offense stays out. So Thielen with Winterburn, two receivers left. One goes wide right. Yeah, I don't know the results here, Paul, but I just don't think this is the play. I just don't. I think you got time. If you can punt it away, a lot can happen on a punt too, you know. Yep. Well, we talked about that, the importance of that snap. Hoffman in motion. Dropping back, Thielen steps up. Thielen feeling pressure. Thielen is going to get sacked. No, he does get rid of the football. It falls incomplete. Turnover on downs going to go to the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs will take over on downs, and now we get a late flag. Flags aplenty. But it's all going to be after the fact. Yeah, but this could be a big, if this is some kind of unsportsmanlike, this will take Western out to to start this series yep. out to the 35 yard line you know if montana tech can get a three and out only one timeout remaining After the you play. know i don't know that Unsports this would be like considered in zero. field goal range on western 15 yards from the previous spot but it'll be first down western so western with the football and they are going to see where this football gets placed here I think it's going to be up around the 35-yard line. It's kind of what it's 30, looking like. Yeah, 37-yard line maybe. But they still have not. So we're waiting to count it off here. So the official starts to make his way. And that will be the case. It'll come out to the 37-yard line. So Western with 240 left to play here in the ball game. They lead by six. Montana Tech has one timeout. So Western's going to be able to eat the bulk of this clock here. Western, three receivers wide left, one back. As Tech brings five up to the defensive front. John Jund out of the shotgun. Handoff going to go to Neville. He's across the 35 to the 33. That's going to be a gain of five for Neville. You can't afford another one of them. And especially with how well Time he's run here in the Tech. second half. I mean, I, final that final feels final like game. about his average in the second half here. Yeah, I think it's clear both. Tech will call their final timeout. Sorry. Both offensive fronts got a pretty good talking to at halftime. And, and sure, they made some adjustments. I'm sure some, you know, the personnel type stuff and some adjustments. But, you know, that's uh, more just light a fire because, you know, all these teams, the run game is so important in setting up everything they do throwing the football. You know, you think about Rocky and you think about Tech and, and Western and Carroll, uh, College of Idaho. So much of it stems off, off their running game. So Montana Tech won in Dillon earlier this year on September 24th, and Western trying to return the favor here in the Mining City. Second down and five for the Bulldogs. 2.35 left to play here in the ball game. John Jund has Neville in the backfield. Three receivers wide left. Both teams coming into this football game, winning their last two. 
Jund. Marks out the count, handoff to Neville. Neville has a blocker. He's across the 30, down to the, they'll mark him right at the 30, so that'll bring up third and two. Clock running. Tech does not have any timeouts remaining. So Tech will bring the nickel outs, bring another linebacker in here as Cole Wyant checks back in. What do you do here? You get the stop. What do you do? do you, if you're Western, do you line up and try and kick the field goal, make it a two-score game, or do you got two, two downs to get it? Coach Graham says two downs to get it. Yeah, I would think that's the case. Third down and two here, especially with how well you've run the ball as of late. Third and two. Snap a little low. John Jun going to keep it, go to the weak side. Jun gets tripped up. He's going to lose a yard. So Jun gets tripped up and goes down. That's how you make the play without making the tackle. That time was that little. Let me see here. Take fourth down or and Kinney. three. Kenny took on the lead blocker and blew him up. Forced John to make a cut, and he went to the ground. I mean, uh, just that's staying with your assignment. 90 seconds remaining here in the ball game. The play clock down to 20. You'd have to assume they're going to let the play clock go all the way down here, no matter what. Either take the delay a game or call a timeout before it hits zero. I'd kick it. I, you know, the, the wind changes everything today for me. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, look at it. So the ball's on the right hash mark. Can you imagine the English you have to put on that thing to kick it Western. into the wind to try and get it back? Half. But Western's got nothing to lose. No. You know, all they can lose is the football game, you know, because the, the conference title isn't on the line for them. No. You know, so I think I would kick the, <laughs> kick the field or try. What the hell? I mean, you spend so much time on PAT field, field goal throughout a season and a week and, and all that stuff. I think this sends a good message to your kicker. Can you tell I'm trying to beg him <laughs> to try and kick the field goal here? <laughs> Fourth down <laughs> and three for Western. And to, to date, I don't believe. I'm kind of with you there, too. That's not a bad idea. Coach Graham thinks punt, quick kick. I like it. Yep, step back, little pooch cunt. That's why he was yeah, a successful a coach call. at Belt, and I am in the booth. Paul. Yeah, I was going to say, for, for our, what, 18, 19 years uh, doing games, I don't believe a coach has ever listened to anything we have said. We've learned nothing. <laughs> 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 but we're going to keep trying. But we got to rely on each other as teachers, so <laughs> it's not much working at, for us there. At 10 games a year for 19 years, <laughs> maybe another 19 years, maybe somebody will listen. Fourth and three, the offense stays out. This is going to be Jund yeah, I, behind I, the running back, I believe. Okay. I And for how well Neville's run, I, I give it to Neville personally. Fourth and three, and Western will call their final timeout. This is exciting. Western. My their goodness. So Western calls game. their final timeout. They see what Tech brings out defensively. Coach Williams will go out and talk to his guys. So on the defensive side of things there, they watch you come out and get set. If, if you're Coach Eric Williams on the defensive side of things, do you change what you initially presented or do you come out in the same formation? I think he has a plan coming in in the week against that uh, trip set, there, you know, everything he's seen. So there's, there's nothing in that set that would confuse him or take him away from, you know, the tendencies that they've got on Western throughout the season. But, you know, he might he might line up a little bit defen defensively and, you know, bluff something and then roll into what he was in, too. You know, they those defensive guys are so tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so Montana Tech, senior day here today. Remember, uh, the Digs will go on the road and finish the season at Northern. And that will be their final game of the year next week. And that yeah. one up to lovely and scenic Haver. So if you're Coach Saban, they got what we would call 11 personnel in the game, two receivers to the boundary, a uh, tight end in the slot, and a wide receiver to the wide side, single back. Man in motion is Mounts. Tech showing man to man. And handoff going to go, and but just destroyed. Neville gets the handoff, and he is eaten alive. That's going to be turnover on downs. Tech will get the football with 103 left to play in the football game. No timeouts. They run right into what I would consider the best defensive player that I've seen in the conference today. They ran that right at James Newby, and he blew it up. Absolutely blew it up, getting some taps from his teammates yep. down there on the sideline. What a great game, and what a great season he's had today. But... You know, it's it's not all just chasing people down and rushing the quarterback for him. He's a three-down guy, 
and uh, he plays the run exceptionally, uh, you know, probably even better than he does the pass, if you can believe that. So Montana Tech needs time to throw the football here. Western brings four up. They have gotten consistent pressure all day. First down at 10, Thielen out of the shotgun. Thielen looking downfield and bobbled and dropped. Logan Kennedy, the intended target, right at midfield, unable to hold on to it. Falls in complete, 58 seconds remaining. Timing's just a little off there. I, you know, like I talked about earlier yeah. in the game, you know, on a windy day, your timing and your, your hand-eye, they just get offset. And I'm talking fractions of a second, but it just it just doesn't feel right a lot of times coming into your hand. You can see this is a pretty standard catch for Logan Kennedy, and you never see him miss those. But you have to believe that the wind had a lot to do with that drop. Second and ten, three receiver spread here for Thielen. Four-man pressure coming. Thielen steps up. Thielen in trouble. Thielen moving to his right, still looking downfield. Airs it up. Pass is caught at the 47-yard line. First and ten, clock will stop to move the chains. Tech quickly gets up to the line of scrimmage. They're going to spike it. They put the ball down. They get the snap and the spike. Clock will stop. Second and ten. And Montana Tech with some life here. Again, no timeouts on either side of the field. A six-point lead for Western. So Tech. Eyeballing this. Thielen is 18 of 33 on the day, 228 yards. He has one touchdown, two interceptions. Tech has 332 yards of total offense on the day. Second and 10. Heavy formation to the right side. Thielen, four-man pressure coming. Thielen flushed, wanted to go right. In trouble, comes back to his left. Thielen now cuts back. He's way behind the line of scrimmage. And this is going to be... This has to be, the flag is thrown as far as intentional grounding. He never left the pocket. He is nearly 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And as he threw that, he threw it at a lineman. Yeah, this is a disaster. So it should be the officials intentional grounding, yeah, intentional grounding against ten. tech five yards from the spot of the foul so the spot it's also lost it down is going to come all the way back to the 25 yard line right in that neighborhood and lost it down he reversed field three times and they will bring it all the way back to the 24 That is a monster play, so a loss of down will make it third down. Third and 33 officially. 38 seconds remaining here in the ball game. And actually it comes back even further to the 19 yard line. The stick shows second down, but it should be third. Now they get a change. So third down and a long way here for the Montana Tech offense. Three receivers. Thielen, downfield. Hoffman overthrown incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth down here for the Montana Tech offense. Fourth down and 38. Yeah, I mean, your only chance here is some kind of a downfield screen of some sort. The back screen I don't think is going to get you, but, you know, you get good runoff and just cross the field with somebody. You see, like, specifically, like the Kansas City Chiefs and some of them teams run that, uh, I call it a downfield screen. I don't know what they call it, but that's about your only prayer. Fourth and 38 here for the digs. Thielen, ball back at their 19. Thielen can't throw the ball to the first down marker. Thielen in the pocket. He's going to air it up deep to Hoffman. Hoffman into double coverage and... Uh, Hoffman almost came down with it. It falls incomplete, and that's going to be ball game. Thrown to the sideline, and actually the wind blew that out of bounds because it looked like it was going to be on the sideline. Hoffman had a shot at it, but it gets blown out of bounds, and a turnover on downs will go to Western, and Montana Tech and Western will split on the year. Now a flag comes down after the fact, which is going to have no bearing on anything here. Yeah, I don't know. Where, where's the flag at? Right in front of the Tech bench yeah, at the 40. That's going to be someone on the Tech sideline. So the Digs and the Bulldogs will split on the After year. The Montana Tech Thanks winning in Dillon. And uh, yes, Western Half winning here the in the Mining City. First down. Yeah, Coach Norris and his staff 
congratulations. I mean, a, a, a well thought out. We knew it was going to be a close game, relatively low scoring game, and uh, two teams that hit and bring it every week, and uh, they'll no doubt just take a knee here. And uh, congratulations to him on the finish of his season. I know the start of it didn't start like he wanted it to, but but they finish. They're finishing strong. Three wins in a row now, over three good teams. So two. the West get the win. And like you say, I mean, they've won their last three. Montana Tech will fall here, so they are 2-1 and one since the break. And that will, uh, you know, we talked about it. Tech was in playoff mode here the last couple of weeks. They needed to win out if they wanted a shot to play in the national tournament uh, in the playoff picture, and that has been snuffed here by the Bulldogs of UM Western. 27-21, our final, as the Bulldogs will get themselves a, a big win. And... Uh, Keep their, uh, keep their run alive as they have one game left. They'll go to Rocky as is the final game for Western, and that's coming up next week. Yeah, records aside, this is no surprise. You know, there will be people that will be surprised because of the records. This is no surprise. No. Western Western is as good as anybody in the conference this year. You know, they just uh, they, they had a couple lapses, but uh, everybody knew it. Uh, they got good personnel. They're certainly, certainly well, well coached. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, a lot of people thought, you know, ask me throughout the week, oh, Tech should roll this weekend. I said, yeah, to pump the brakes on that. Western, yeah. they're the only team to beat the College of Idaho. And, uh, well, yeah, that's a good football team. And the other thing to remember, they were picked to win the conference. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing you cannot overlook right now is, is the Bulldogs were picked to win this conference. Uh, they came into this ball game four and four, but they uh, they had been playing awfully good football, and they showed it here. This game was ugly. I mean, we had a lot of turnovers, we had sacks, a lot of kind of uncharacteristic activity. But again, it's it's a it's a game of the Frontier Conference, and you'd better adjust. You'd better be able to get with tough wins in tough spots. And Western did. I mean, they came out, they performed, uh, they get a huge win here at Bob Green today. Yeah, it's a it's a tough pill to swallow if you're Montana Tech. But uh, you still got seven and three on your radar. You got to go up to Northern and play a team that looks to maybe have improved a little bit. They'll lose yep. only nine to nothing to Rocky, who is another really sound, good football team. And yeah, I mean it's tough. You feel for like Jordan Washington sitting down there, you know, his his head in his hands. But he played a great game, and you know, frankly, Montana Tech, you know, they could have sure they could have played better on offense, but you know, a lot of times that's sliding the defense a little bit. And yep. Western brought it today defensively, especially that defensive front. But uh, we're sound in the secondary. You know, they, they gave up, you know, quite a bit to say Torgerson in the middle, but never let anybody behind them. And uh, they got the pressure on the quarterback and the good underneath coverage, you know, uh, uh, you know, with Smith, you know, a couple big plays there at inside linebacker. And, yeah, this is a tough one. This will be a tough one in that locker room. But but you got to tip your hat to the Western, UM Western Bulldogs. So uh, they, 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 uh, they didn't give up on their season. So the 122nd meeting between the two goes the way of the Bulldogs. Montana Tech leads the overall series with 64 wins. Uh, Western now with 56 wins. They have tied two times uh, in their history, again, going back to 1925. Uh, let's take a look at the overall numbers. We'll start things off for Western. 17 first downs on the day for Western. They ran 59 offensive plays for 319 total yards. Uh, they ran for 195 on the ground and had 124 yards through the air. Uh, other numbers for Western, they were 2 of 12 on third down. I mean, that's a big win going 2 of 12 on third down. They were 2 of 4 on fourth down here today. Individually, John Jund was 10 of 20 through the air, 124 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, did not throw an interception. He was sacked three times on the day, so they didn't give him the, the rushing, uh, the one we were questioning. They didn't gotcha. give it to him. Uh, rushing, uh, Neville, uh, great game. Had a big run in the first half and then had a really outstanding second half. Uh, Neville, 22 carries, 164 yards, no touchdowns for him. Mounts had one carry for 21. Receiving uh, looks like, uh, well, Mounts had four catches for 33. Thomas, two for 50 and a score. Uh, you had Sentman with two catches for 15, and Benedict, one catch for 14 for the Bulldogs of UM Western. They had two picks on the day uh, and got points off of those turnovers as well. At what, 10 points off of two turnovers, got the uh, interception. The first one they got a field goal out of. The second interception they got a touchdown out of. Uh, so 10 points off of turnovers for Western on the day, if I remember right. Yeah, and Tech defensively was outstanding on sudden change and turnovers. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you can only ask your defense to do so much. Uh, just a great defensive football game. I mean, if we were doing this post-game wrap-up 
and you saw that Jund was 10 for whatever he was for 120 yards, what would you thought the outcome would have been today? Well, yeah, and that and 17 first downs. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. it just, yeah, you think that honestly – that, uh, that this was going to go the way of Tech. And, and Western took advantage of turnovers, took advantage of good field position, and, and got a big win. You know, for Tech, 23 first downs here today. They ran for 104. They threw for 228 yards as a team. Uh, other numbers, they ran 68 total offensive plays for 332 total yards. Uh, they did have, uh, what are we looking at here, penalties, seven penalties for 77 yards on the day. They had one fumble, two interceptions on the day. They were 6 of 14 on third down. Uh, Thielen was 18 of 36 on the day with two interceptions, threw for 228 yards, one touchdown, and he was sacked three times as well. Uh, let's see, rushing Winterburn went over 121 carries, 101 yards for Winterburn. Blake counts four carries, 21 yards. Uh, and uh, he, uh, you know, he got a couple snaps early. You could tell he, he was a hurting unit. Uh, and uh, well, hopefully uh, he'll get better and be able to play at Northern next week. Uh, Receiving-wise, Torgerson had a monster. Eight catches, 137 yards. He made all of those eight catches look easy, even though uh, about seven of them were incredibly acrobatic, and about five of them he had no right catching. Uh, Torgerson, 137 yards. Hoffman, five catches, 43 yards, and a score.